All right, all right. It is a Sunday night. I hope you guys are having a great evening. I'm having one so far. So good. No complaints. All right. We got a great topic for you guys tonight. We started it last week when we were talking about the top three reasons, the top three things that aren't going to change anytime too soon. These things, you can, you can forget about them changing in the United States. This is one of the reasons why guys are getting their passports. Not because of what's going on, but because of what won't change. I'm not going to say that again. I, I don't know about other men, but I do know one thing. When it came to getting my passport, it wasn't because of what was going on in the United States. I got my passport because I knew that certain things were not going to change anytime too soon in my lifetime. And I stopped lying to myself. And once I stopped lying to myself about these things that wouldn't change, it allowed me to enjoy two areas of my life. Two. The area of my life of being married, but also the area of my life being single. And we're going to talk about that because one of the things, one of the mistakes that's being made by a lot of these, these hyenas that's out there speaking, trying to speak on our behalf, when it comes to travel, well, if y'all going to these other countries and meeting all these other ladies, why aren't y'all getting married? I'm going to tell you now. You don't have to get married. Just because some of us have, you can still embrace and enjoy your single life. And that's our topic for tonight. These three areas, we're going to talk about the hyenas. And we're also going to talk about the fact that you can value your days of being single. Some guys do want to get married. That's why we call ourselves Love Crossing Borders. Because we say we try to help you fall in love when it comes to crossing borders. But we also try to help you to fall in love with the borders that you cross. Some of y'all might not fall in love with a woman, but you might fall in love with the country. Like you always hear me say, I'm cheating on the United States. I'm cheating. I'm cheating. She's my main girl. But I ain't gonna lie to you. I is cheating. I got a sad country. I got sad countries. I got a harem of sad countries. Over 190 countries to be exact on the side. So the United States is not, she's just a main man, but she ain't my only girl. No, 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 no. So when it comes to you single man, today we're gonna celebrate you dudes. Or you guys that are thinking about being in serious relationships later on down the line, this is your episode. Or some of you guys that don't want to get married, you just want to have you a nice girlfriend take care of you for the rest of your life. Or a couple of girlfriends. We're talking to you tonight. Why am I saying this? The reason why I'm saying this is because F what those women have to say about trying to coerce you to live their fantasy, their well, how can I put it? Their version of a fairy tale. Women grew up with the Disney fairy tale of they live happily ever after, after the wedding. We ain't live with that. Nobody told us that, even though statistically more men want to be married to men than women. Even though statistically in the United States, you have more black men that are married than black women. Even though you have more black men in the middle class than than black women, even though black men make more on a dollar than black women, black women only make on a dollar. For every dollar every white male makes, do you know black women only make 61 cents? Let me say that one again, it's gonna butt your head. For every dollar of working hard that a black woman gets, she's only making 61 cents to a white male who's doing the exact same job with the exact same experience. We make more money than them. We're more middle class than them. And guess what? We don't have to live their, their version of the fairy tale. You guys do not have to get married. I repeat that. Just because these hyenas are going on TikTok and on YouTube saying, well, if y'all traveling to all these countries and y'all looking for wives, why aren't all y'all married? That ain't none of your damn business. That is none of your business. But before we go any further, we about to do the shout outs. That's right, Adrian. 
We about to do the shout outs. Let's get these shout outs out here. We got Jay, number one lady in the building. Jay, shout out to you. The Carthane, the queen. All right. We got Ratchet in the building. I mean, Racket Club in the building. Shout out to you, Stefano. It's not a live stream if it's not Stefano in the building. All right. Happy Sunday, without a doubt. Make sure you do not forget to hit that like button. I like you. We got 30 people in here. I like you. Make sure you like us, too, by hitting that like button. My brother, my friend, got much love for this man right here. My boy, Victory, is in the building. Hello, everyone. Make sure you press at the doorbell. That's right. That like button. Click that like button. Shout out to you guys. All right. We got another one of the family members in the building. Gabrielle in the building right now. And also the Rev is here. Rev Kev is in the building. Passport was misspelled in the opening. Did I, did I misspell it? Let me know what part of the opening that I've misspelled and so I'll get that taken care of. Thank you very, very much for letting me know that. I've been using that title for the longest and so I need to change that. Thank you very much. Charles, Charles Jones, Mr. The Mr. Does It All. Travels everywhere, he does it all, ladies and gentlemen. GS is in the building. Also, we got the dazzling Urban Knight. Cool name, boy. I feel like with that, with that title, boy, that's that's a, that's like an '80s title, man. It sounds like he should be on skates, just rolling, cooling, hitting up the ladies. I ain't mad at you, brother. Smooth, smooth with it. We got West Two Four Zero One. Western women want to control the flow of funds, resources, and uh, uh, that that uh, comes out of. The friend zone. Absolutely correct. That's a good point. One of many reasons why hit peace and Uncle Uncle Ruckus. <laughs> I know Uncle Ruckus for real. Uh, from Facts 26 are coming coming after the passport bros. And you know what? Let them come. If you're not a governmental official or somebody that has actual Senate power, if you're not a lobbyist in Washington. I could care less what a person has to say, male or female. I really can't. I study I've studied the government enough to know that there that these laws that we stand up under as passport holders, these laws and policies have stood in place long before many of us have really taken advantage of passports. I'm talking about all the way to since World War II, the implementation and use of passports on a major scale. It would take, in order for these women to get what they want in regards to passports, a passport application to change, they would have to go to not the legislative system, I mean, not the uh, the, uh, the legislative, but the other target, they would have to go to the legislative, which means would be the Senate and the House. It had to be voted on just to change a policy. And remember, passports are federal, so whatever a state has to say can't be implemented. So while these ladies are running off at the mouth, we're going to go to the government. Bernie Sanders is not going to help you. Mitch McConnell, Chuck Schumer, none of them. Nancy Pelosi, nobody. We're, we, we are meant to be a small group moving forward. We're not a massive group. So when women sit back and they, they cry and they sigh and they try to prophesy about the fact that we got our passports and we're going to do something to stop it. You can't stop it. You, you have to stop us. All the corporations and corporate big wigs will be impacted. All the white boys. All the white boys will be impacted. You know all this ain't going down. Dave in the building. What's up, Dave? Rod from B. Moore. Shout out to be more in the, the good cooking that they have out there. Some crabs. Crabs and Corona is kill it out there. Amos in the building. All right. I'm keeping it, I'm keeping it smooth. You see, I keep it grown. I keep it sexy for us grown adults in the background. Not too much hippity hip, hip, hippity, bibbity bop. Like the old folks used to say, that hippity bibbity bop y'all listen to over there. What's that? What's that y'all listen to? That hippity bibbity bop. My boy in the building with the coolest. YouTube title, The African Wolf. 
get your popcorn ready yes get your popcorn ready today's topic once again is the fact that you get to enjoy being single just as much as some of us have traveled and enjoyed being married do not let these hyenas convince you that you should get married because that's what they would have done if they used a passport. And since they aren't using passports, they can't tell you, well, if you meet women in other countries, then why aren't you married yet? You don't need to be married to nobody. You can take your time, brother. Ladies, take your time. Don't be listening to what these hyenas have to say. EBN, shout out to you, brother. Buenas noches. Beach material, like that. I'm glad you guys like the music, man. We're going to be keeping that music. As part of the live stream, he said, "I got one of my young friends wanting to join the Manosphere. His name, uh, he said, his name is Nephew Drew Daltrey. All right, shout out to Nephew Drew in the building. Let me scroll down. We got Uno in the building. Dre, I'm a truck driver, and I enjoy listening to your videos while driving." You know what? It's a lot of you truck driving brothers out there, man. I appreciate you dudes, man. I really do, because I know what it's like I used to unload the trucks. I used to work in a warehouse, man. One of, one of my, I used to wear, be a warehouse supervisor, working 13 hours a day. So I wasn't always working in suits. I was, man, I'm, I'm Midwest. When you Midwest, you do it all. So shout out to you truck driving brothers. And shout out also to my boy, Jay Fleming. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. He said, great job on uh philip scott show today yes i was on philip scott show today for some of you guys didn't get a chance to see it Flip, philip scott is a, is a black youtuber make sure you guys subscribe to his channel the guy's been around for a while he always has excellent excellent content to encourage the black community to do better and be better so yeah shout out to that brother man it, it was great to be on this show the so final says all the women have been exposed and now the trail to uh they now travel to jamaica and it's a video floating around Ooh, yeah i just looked at the one that i think uh uruguay uganda you i think it was uganda the one i just looked at with british women going over down there to africa any aw uh s guys out there uh, okay I'm, I'm kind of dipping and the last shout out is to gold house in the building he said uh all the way from miami passport bros life man listen if i was to be back in the states in any state i can't lie to you i'm a, I, I, i'm an adopted florida boy i love that that salt life love that salt life all right he says uh, amazon uh yeah amazon web services uh, remote work yes amazon is always hiring for remote work so, so some of you guys that are always looking for you a nice remote job where you're making a decent income and yet you can start your transition of living partly outside the united states amazon amazon is always hiring for online workers all right but before we go any further we always talk about the term hyena but one of the things we don't talk about is what actually is a hyena so what we're going to do is take a look and see the difference between how men in a hyena clan or the males in a hyena clan are treated and how many of you metaphorically are treated. So let's take a look at this real quick because it's amazing and how sad it is. So let me make sure I got everything turned up. Let you guys see this video. two or so, they leave their clan and strike out on a lonely, dangerous search for a clan with better mating prospects. Lots of other mammalian males do the same thing, but for them, the transition to a new group is an opportunity to become <coughs> high-ranking individuals and increase their social standing. Not so for male hyenas. 
They endure aggressive hazing by the new clan before even being allowed to join. And once a male does gain acceptance, he becomes the very lowest ranking hyena in the pecking, or bone cracking order. The tasty- Let's stop right there for a split second. Let's take a look at this. Cause this is, this is serious. For many of you, this is how you're being treated in the United States. Let's let's not lie. Who's at the top of the pecking order with the big bone steaks and everything? It ain't you. What about number two in line? It's the kids. Next coming down the, the turnpike. It ain't you. All the males are at the bottom. You think this is a game in the United States. I'm going to say this again. You think that this is a game in the United States. And you think, well, feminism is going to spill over around the world. It can only spill over in percentages around the world. United States has accepted it full throttle. You can't name too many other countries in the world right now that has accepted feminism full throttle. But the United States, UK is right behind them, a little bit of Canada. But you can't shoot down to Mexico and pull full throttle feminism. She'll get her head knocked off. Take that to the Middle East. She'll get her head knocked off. Go on ahead. Take that one full throttle uh, uh, behavior into Eastern Europe. She'll get her head knocked off. And she know it. That's why when they sit back and complain about us, why don't you go to, if, if you guys are real passport bros, why don't you go to Sweden? Well, why don't you go to Sweden? Because you can't take that mouth with you to Sweden, ladies. You can't take that selfish behavior with you. You can't take that 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 it's all about meism with you to Eastern Europe. So when people tell you or try to convince you that feminism is going to be global, it's going to be full throttle. It's not even full throttle here in South America. Do if you think that these local South American men are going to let ladies become like these hyenas like we did in the United States and like we're doing in the United States. You got another thing coming. That's why you often hear people say hyenas. Males are at the bottom of the pecking order. When you are a young male hyena, they will kick you out of the clan. You got to go find another clan, and then they're going to haze you before you even are able to be part of a member of the new clan. You, as a male hyena, you don't even get meat on the bone. I'll say that again. In the United States, as a male, doesn't matter what color you are, no matter who you are, race, creed, that feminism is so poisoned in the United States right now that right now you ain't eating no meat of, of life. You eat nothing but bones and bone marrow in the United States as a man. And here's the kicker. That won't change in your lifetime. Say that again. If you think any of this that's taking place is going to get better for you in the United States and the women are going to turn around and get better, I promise you, it's not going to get better for you in the United States when it comes to these three areas. Number one is what we're talking about, how women treat you. It's not going to get better. And I have nothing against the ladies in the United States. You know why? Because you're the sucker that keep going for it. It's your fault. It ain't the fault of the ladies. They showed you we're feminists. This is what we are. Who ruled the world? Girls. Who ruled the world? Girls. They're telling you Every day, all day. This is what the United States is from now motherfucking on. And so anything that goes wrong in the dating scene, relationship scene, child support scene, man not being supported scene, men, whatever takes place from these days forth is all our fault as men. Because you're putting up now. All you're doing is putting up with. Anytime you're in the United States and you meet the love of your life, great girl. I love her. She take care of me. We got two kids together. Two. We got a dog and a cat and a baseball bat. And you still have a chance of her being a part of the 80% of women 
that file for divorce over 51 percent almost 56 percent of marriages in the united states are divorced we're here in colombia it's only nine percent i'm gonna get to your to your super chats in a second guys thank you for the super chats could i sell you a car that you had almost a 60 percent chance you're gonna get in a car accident within five years could i sell you that car brand new i'm talking about this car straight off the lot straight off the lot ain't no recall nothing you got a 60 percent chance of getting your head bashed in in that car would you buy that car from me brand new house structured new condominium i mean it is laid out the view is a million dollar view but here's the kicker it, with this brand new condo in Miami, right off the beach. Well, let's not use that example too soon. But in that brand new condo, you got a 60% chance of that building collapsing. Would you buy a condo in that building? Brand new, though. It's beautiful, sexy. All that you ever wanted. I mean, every room you go into, like, this is what I, this is what I'm talking about. This is a condo right here. You got a 60, 60% 60 chance to end up like this. At the bottom. Would you buy that condo? So you wouldn't buy a house or a condo that would, that would, that would, fall apart within the first five years, five to 10 years, you wouldn't buy a car from me knowing that you have a 60% chance of bashing your head in, in that vehicle. If you know you got a 60%, this the, is the part. With the car, you're not even the driver. Remember I just said 80% of all divorces are filed by women. She's driving that car off the cliff. She's the one that's decided this ain't good enough for me. I think I see better. Y'all keep on going for that same trick. And then they're trying to, then since they can't control you in the States, now they're trying to control you out the States. Well, if y'all meeting good women in all these other countries, why ain't y'all marrying them? Bruh, I'm going to say this again. I think I'm freezing a little bit. Forgive me if I am. You don't owe anybody anything. I'll say that again. You don't owe me. You don't owe anybody anything. Enjoy and embrace your single years as a passport, bro. Take it from a married dude. I love my single time. Traveling, smashing, meeting new cultures, eating new foods getting up doing doing all the single man stuff but i was doing it on a global basis i loved it i'm not gonna sit up here and pretend and it wasn't a woman in the united states that could dare convince me to be married until i was ready to get married or ready to get into a solid relationship do not let these women trick you because once you're in the united states like i said number one thing is how you are treated as a person by way of the system by way of the system will never change why because they support women no system don't care about women and men why because uh, of the the women can have the children system don't care nothing about the kids what do i always mention what is the united states a corporation or a country United States has never been a country. It uses the title of a country. It is an established since day one corporation. Let's make money with this thing. Let's make money. Whether it was London ruling it or whether it was the United States being independent themselves. It has always been a corporation. You try to run, 
wave your flag and they got you out there barbecuing on the 4th of July. Even though that ain't your Independence Day. Just in the name of pretending to be a country, but it is built off of consumerism. Nothing wrong with that. Capitalism. I love it. But let's call a spade a spade in the words of Chantel Simone. At the end of the day, the reason why the system is set up and it will never, ever change in your favor as a male, it is not profitable. 70% of all products that are bought and sold in the United States are females. Most females go into college debt more than men ever have. Women are willing to spend on a wedding $15,000, $30,000 where a man will sit up there and say, I'll go rent a tuxedo. I meet you over there and then I, I take my tuxedo right back. Right back. That's why it's not going to get better for you in your lifetime. You will be gone, guys. I'm saying enjoy your singleness or enjoy your future getting married, whatever it is, with your passport. Because I'm telling you, at the end of the day, At the end of the day, my passport, <laughs> it's not going to change your life. So all that hanging around, waiting around, tapping your fingers, twilling your thumbs in the United States, hoping that the opportunities for manhood to come back. It There is no money. How can the United States flourish? Let's be real. How can the United States economically Flourish. Keep the dollar as strong as it is. Bring in the amount of income tax from revenue and sales of products and services the way that it does and have men and has still have men looked upon with reverence, respect and honor. It can't. It's not profitable. It, it, the United States would go bankrupt trying to look out for men and make everything equal. Women spend too much. Women vote more than men when it comes to voting. Let's just talk about voting, how Bernie Sanders got into office, how Biden or Trump got into office. It's never the men who majority vote. It's always women voters. Women control the, the, the ballot box. It is not profitable to sit out here and talk about men issues when they know they can get on a platform and debate issues that mainly impact women. Education safety uh uh the medicaid and medicare retirement anything that you know gun safety protection for children in schools all of this centers around the customer base who is the customer base in the united states women so while you sitting back, you with the day that you get married to that boo of yours, I'm the happiest one for you. I ain't mad at you, bro. I need you to stay in the States and keep paying taxes. Are you crazy? i say that again. Stay in the States and keep paying them day of taxes. But I will also say this. I'm about to go to the comment section. I will also say this, guys. The first thing, do not be fooled. This is the first thing that will never change. How you are treated by the system, not just women, but by the system in the United States. It is no fucking profitability in looking out for men in the United States. It never has been and it never will be. I'll repeat that. There is no way the United States can stay on top and look out for men. They use men. Yes, they use us for STEM, science, technology, engineering, in mathematics, yes. They use us for protection, military, local police, things like that. They use us to build things. Yes, they do. Use us to, for our leadership skills. Yes, they do. But the system itself is not built to look out for a man in his old age. The system is not looked out to look out for a man when it comes to protecting a man. When it comes to domestic violence, the system could care less about females slapped you upside the head with a crowbar. She ain't going to jail. 
they're going to tell you get an Advil and walk it off. So at the end of the day, since you know that there is a country, I mean, my bad, a corporation, that it's product base and this customer base, in other words, is not catered to you. What are you going to do? Are you going to make the plans of leaving that country or stay single in that country? I kid you not. There is no way in the world I could gamble on buying a car that I in the United States that I know that I got a 60% chance of going crashing off the road and, the, and I wasn't even driving. The female was driving. There is no way in the world I'm going to buy a condo that my girl told me to purchase and then we got a 60% chance of that condo coming down, smashing down to the ground because my girl convinced me of it. The female driving. We got a 60% chance of ending up in this situation in the United States as a man. You got a 60% chance of when that woman files for that divorce, you go from the top where you was eating steaks and ribs and barbecue and all that. And you got to rebuild, regroup and restructure all the way down to the bottom. And the most that you can do is look at me, Taylor made dreams and, uh, and, and chop a pot TV zoom to Thailand you can watch us from afar while you're trying to rebuild your life because you didn't went from the top all the way down to the bottom as a hyena just because you're a male. You can't convince me otherwise. I could come off what I could do. I could actually just shut up and don't be on YouTube ever again. Guess what? The system ain't going to change. That's why you never hear me cry about the system. Why? It's not going to change. Let me get my passport. I'm out the door. You won't hear me complain about Trump, Bernie Sanders. You won't hear me complain about local police, grassroots, none of that. Mm -mm. The hyena lives on top. <laughs> yes, yeah, I know, right? Jay says, he said, hell no, you can't be like that in Mexico. No, you get your head knocked off in these other countries. And I don't promote violence at all. I'm not a violent dude at all, especially with, with towards ladies. I'm not violent in general, but, you know, unless I'm defending myself. But at the end of the day, I'm not one of those dudes that be like rule with an iron hand type dudes anyway. But it's a lot of millions of men out here that do. And I kid you not. I, I see dudes, these women get out of hand here in Colombia. They mama know not to, the girl mama know not to say nothing. Police will stand right there. Don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. Her brother, he know not to say nothing. I kid you not. They don't play that down here. A woman get out of hand. All right. Uh, 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 who was it today? Taylor made dreams. He was like, man, they going crazy down there in Colombia in some areas. And they had this dude just this week under arrest. And the photos that were in the newspaper were straight graphic. If Colombians don't know how to use nothing else, they know how to circle use a machete. He had that girl so neatly packed. You thought she was going to your local grocery store. I kid you not. F photos were straight graphic in that news headline. It ain't like the states where they where they don't show you that part. Oh, here in Colombia, you're going to see it all. And guess what they do in Colombia? They don't look at the guy like, oh, my God, he attacked her and he, he, he hacked her. No. Colombians, first thing they do is like, what she do? What she in many countries are like that. What she do? He ain't do that for nothing. What she do? That's not a total stranger. So what she do? What's my point in all this? This doesn't exist in most countries. I'll say that again. You as a male at the bottom of the pecking order and you, the, the female and her cubs 
you stepdads out there and her cubs at the top that's not how the world works that's hyena world so when you guys hear these guys on and, and ladies on these other youtube channels talk about the hyenas you know exactly what they're talking about shout out to andrew in the building nephew drew checking in for some massive knowledge we're talking about once again enjoying and embracing your singleness enjoy it brothers enjoy you will never hear me sit back and say well bro i'm married you need to be married why aren't you brothers married no hell no embrace your singleness with your passport do not let i don't care how i don't care how many years you put in before you meet the one take your time if you run through everything in dr cool you come to colombia you have fun cool costa rica cool you all up in france just smashing them cool you over there smashing some thick ones in thailand cool live your single life i don't know if any other youtuber told you that or they feel encouraged to tell you that bruh you don't owe nobody nothing ladies you don't owe nobody nothing if you want somebody to lick your booty let that man lick your booty in another country ain't nothing wrong with it your girlfriends usually want to talk because ain't nobody licking their booty in the states so now you go to some other country with your money and your hard-earned time do what you gonna do as long as they ain't under age because you ladies y'all y'all Ooh, there's a lot of stuff coming out on y'all. Y'all mess with little boy, little boys. Y'all, y'all worse than them dudes in prison. Y'all worse than them ladies. Really? You can't wait till the person turn 18 in no country? Come on now. Ladies, you're doing the bass aquas. I mean it. You're doing the bass aquas. So at the end of the day, my point is enjoy, embrace your single life is yours just as much as the married life and married world is mine and yours may come or even some of you that are already married and you and your spouse are thinking about leaving the united states and maybe having a piece of property in another country do it man one thing about the united states they want everybody to be scared if you ain't scared of travel they want you to be scared of this and scared of that man you ain't got to be living your life like that shout out again to my man jay you don't owe them an explanation, nothing. You don't need to go on their YouTube channels and explain why you still single. Well, if these passport bros really had somebody that they loved, don't nobody in another country want y'all. Don't nobody in the United States want you and nobody else in another country want you. Ladies, who are you lying to? See, it's eat. Fellas, is it just me? The politicians lie. Got it. Politicians lie. Little kids, when they want something that they want, sometimes they're going to lie. A dude trying to get that sex, sometimes a man might tell a lie. Don't nobody on this planet lie. Nobody on this planet, and you guys can put in the comment section a one. If you think I'm if, if you believe what I'm about to say, be ready to put your ones in. Don't nobody on this planet lie more than a woman to another woman. Women are the most lying mother you will ever see when they talk to another woman. They will never tell another woman the full truth. She knows she sucked 10 last week, but she'll pretend like she's only dating two dudes. She will sit up there and lie. I ain't lonely. I'm living the who rules, rules the world, girl. Be going in the going home in the other side of the bed, cold than a mother, and they be crying. I'm about to put a one in the comment section. My dang self. Believe you me, women are the biggest liars to each other of all time. If the ladies, if you in the comments, if you worried about men lying to you, we ain't your number one liars. If you worry about your kids lying to you, boy, was you cussing in school? No, mama, I don't cuss in school. Don't worry about your kids lying. The one person you need to worry about who lying to you, your mama, aunties, co female cousins, your best friends from high school, college, the, the biggest liar you ever want to meet that's a female is when you look in the mirror. You going to lie to you. Women lie to themselves. Oh, my God. Y'all some of the biggest liars. Men will sit up there and admit I'm fat. 
I need to work on this. Look in the mirror. Let me take care of that. Women will look in the mirror and talk about something. Uh, I'm still a diva. No, you're a fat ass. How the hell you Lizzo? You breathing a bit harder than Biggie. You got me want to look at you and call you Big Papa Lizzo. Women will lie. Men do not lie to women as, as good and as well as women lie to themselves. Can't nobody keep up with them lies. We ain't that good. We good at a lot of things. Thank you guys for all the ones. Men are good at a lot of things, but we cannot lie to women the way that women lie to themselves and lie to each other. They will look each other straight in the face. And you know, you be knowing like, her boyfriend just got out of prison. Why she want to sit up there and tell her girl that, that, he, that he just got out the army? Her girlfriend, her boyfriend just knocked her upside the head last week and she want to sit up there in front of her girlfriends and talk about some. There is no way I would take none of that from a man. You, you, they, you light skinned with a black eye looking like Peter the dog on the Little Rascals. High sign. And you want to sit up there and lie to your girlfriends with a Peter the dog eye sticking out. Women will lie. So when I sit up there and I say, when women are talking to women and they trying to tell about, talk about us passport bros, dude, those females are lying and they lie to you too. They lie to you too. So when it comes to you being single, that you don't owe them nothing. Why? Because no matter what you do, if you got married like I am, they got something to say, don't they? If you single, they still going to run off at the mouth. If you in the country, but you got a passport and you ain't use it in six months, they going to run off at the mouth. But if you leave the country for six months, they still got something to say. You cannot make them happy, bro. I, I know, I know, I, I know. These are our aunties, cousins, mamas. These these are ones that made the, the your, they clean chitlins for you and made greens for you. All the high cholesterol, ex slave food that we call soul food ain't nothing but ex slave survival food. If you ever want to go down the list of in in the almanac of ex slave menu, okay, um, macaroni and cheese with uh, extra cheese, okay, uh huh, sugar induced uh, sweet potato pie, okay, all right extra sugar chitlins which is pig intestines extra on the swine okay ham which yeah okay yeah all all this slave survival menu y'all still eating it and so because it tastes so good no you're just so used to eating it that you don't know any other menu your palates are accustomed to them after all these years Soon as you get as soon as you don't eat that that anymore, you start to realize, like, man, I ain't, my favorite food used to be bacon until I stopped eating bacon. And I was like, oh, what, is, what is that smell? That's bacon. Mm, off with you. Leave my pork alone, Dre. <laughs> I'm trying to teach y'all how to long live longer with these young ladies we got. Yeah, they're not even uh good at lying either that, that's the part men can see through that see that's why women know they can't tell these barefaced lies to men because men look at you like so you're gonna tell you think i'm believe that so you think i'm tom tucker that dumb mother right men are, let women but women always just a girl together we can do some amazing we'll rule the together oneness girlfriend Oh, I like your weave. Oh, I like your weave too. Where did you get that purple and gray from? Oh my God. Lying it. No, as soon as the female walk away, or how many times? Okay, check it out. If you if I'm lying, how many times have you smashed a chick and her girlfriend who she just was on the phone hyping up? And she got off the phone in the bed and she turned around and started gossiping to you about her girlfriend and her girlfriend's situation. 
and all the stuff that you looking at her like, well, why you ain't tell your girlfriend that? If if you think her man ain't shit, why you ain't tell tell your girl that when you was just on the phone with her a minute ago? Why would you let her get off the phone and be still sucking the dick of a nigga that that's gonna smack upside the head tomorrow morning? Why would you? Why would you do that? That's girlfriends lying. That's not gonna change. Let me get down to the super chats, and then I'm gonna scroll back up. Shout out to my brother. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the super chat. All love and all facts, man. Listen, all facts. Women lie. Women lie to them to, to, to each other and to themselves so bad. You just so. When, do you ever feel sorry for women when they lie so much? You just be looking at them like, God dang, y'all just really believe this shit. Did you just see it? And it be it'll be six of them in a room 10 of them in a room ain't nothing but wine and damn old school rb playing and you looking at them like look at all these look look at all these line heifers in here and don't let you walk in the room in the middle of a lie that they decide that they gonna believe themselves all of a sudden the room and get quiet because you're the only one that that acknowledging what she just told was a lie you know that right how many times have you heard women say i'm not putting up with that Knowing that they putting up with that right now, I would never let him. I wish he would go through my purse. Yeah, girlfriend, I'll never let a man go through my. P- yeah, you might not let a man go through your purse, but he been driving your car all week long like he baby boy, smashing chicks in the back seat. But you ain't gonna tell that part, are you, sister? That you caught your man in your car getting his nuts sucked. In the back seat of your brand new car. You ain't gonna tell your girlfriends that, are you, ladies? All you single ladies, all you single ladies. You ain't gonna tell that, are you? You ain't gonna tell the fact that statistically only 24% of all married men cheat. 24%. Statistically, 28% off the off of the, the analysis that they did for 2022. 28 percent of all married women cheat so when they sit up there and talk about well if i marry, he might cheat. bitch you might be the one that's cheating how the fuck? statistically you are more prone to get that pussy away than i am to get his dick away how the hell that's not going to change anytime too soon while you in the united states not at all not at all. Shout out, Andrew. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> you know how many wives I done ran through? Dude. Okay. I'll be the first one to put some ones in the comment section. Hey, hey, hey am I the only one that has smashed somebody's wife? Put a one in the comment section. Hey, hey it, it could have, you ain't got to tell a year that you did it, but. Am I the only one that have ran through somebody's wife? Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Victory. I ain't the only one. These women out here cheating. Cheating on some good dudes. This is the funny part. Am I the only one in the, that have ran through somebody's wife and when they describing their husband, he's a decent dude? I have yet to get some domestic violence pussy. I ain't getting no pussy from nobody that was sitting up there. She was getting her ass whooped and he did her wrong. It was always some cool brother that he at work right now and he worked like so many shifts. Come on, I'll put another one in the comment section. I ain't never had no coochie where she need to be rescued. It was always a female that was cheating on a good dude, a solid dude. It was never a lame dude. It was never a weak dude. A dude. It was always a dude that was about. I'm gonna tell y'all something. It was some dudes like us, some good five figure, six figure, focusing on your kids, take care of responsibility dudes, and I'm fucking your wife in her ass, straight up, straight up. I told y'all about the one that that told y'all the, the one that 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 she was online on on a um on Black Planet. I'm going to throwback. 
you doing a throwback on y'all on Black Planet. She was on Black Planet. Told y'all the one. She's on Black Planet and she had a fake photo up there. Fake photo. Janet Jackson. And when I hit her up, she she hit me back and she said, Well, in real life, I look better than Janet. I say, get the fuck. You don't look better than no damn. Just Janet. This this is doing no, that's the way love goes, era. So, what? You don't look better than no Janet. You're crazy. Bruh. She said, I got a, she said, I got a business meeting and I got a hotel room on the other side of town. She said, meet me over there if you want to see. Man, this dude wife was so fine. She looked better than Janet. She even had the Janet six pack abs. She was fine. The face, everything, deep dish dimples, all of it with the little freckles over the nose. I'm like, Damn, she do look better than Janet. Man, I beat that man's wife, that man's wife in for about a good four months, man. Kid you not. <laughs> and she was paying me to miss work. <laughs> hey, I was a dog. <laughs> she was paying me, boy. She was paying your boy well. I pay you three times as much. Don't go to work today. What? <laughs> I can't make it. He said, "I knew." A, he said, uh, I, "He said I knew it was a rap." And my forty-year-old mama was trying to uh, go to the club <laughs> as me. <laughs> Come on, mom! <laughs> no, mom! Mom in the building. Mom was trying to get hers in. I ain't mad at mom. I'm not mad at mine. So first thing, first thing that makes you guys enjoy your traveling and being single is the fact that nothing's going to change as far as the system in the United States because it's not profitable, profitable to help you. You can forget about that. There are no male lobbyists. I want to say this again. There are no lobbyists that are out there for the male agenda. You ain't never seen nobody walking through the halls of Washington on behalf of manhood. Get the fuck out of here. Number two, the dating arena. The dating arena is not going to change anytime too soon. So you might as well enjoy your singleness. Like I always say, the dating arena is not like looking for a needle in a haystack. It's like looking for a needle in a stack of needles. That's what dating in the United States is like right now. You standing there, it's this big ass pile of needles, a big barn full of needles, and you just trying to find one golden needle in a barn full of needles. Okay, you have fun with that. The rest of us, you can believe that. You can believe that. That's what dating in the United States is like. <laughs> Shout out to you guys. He said, I'm a legal document assistance. He said, a lot of divorces. Um, uh, on restraint, on restraining and oh, and restraining orders. Uh, I haven't either. Yeah. It'll never be a problematic situation where she just cheating. Dude, every wife that I didn't smash. And I, I know some of you guys can attest to that. Every wife that I smash was in a good marriage she ain't had no reason to be smashing and if the dude was a little jealous she gave him reason to be well he could have been cheating too i don't know about that because usually wives that's cheating usually run off at the mouth and tell me if their husband's cheating anyway and most of them dudes wasn't even cheating they were just regular everyday dudes that's the part that messed me up that's what kind of like shunned me from marriage for a long time in the United States because it was more or less like, so what you're saying is you could be a good man, take care of the kids, bring in the money, got three businesses, you own two houses, you could travel the world, and yet you still sucking my dick. So that's what you're telling me right now, ma'am. So that kind of like shunned me. Like that's what made me say, okay, well, let me enjoy my singleness. Let me enjoy being single for a while until I find the one. Because if I'm able to sit up here and get through these wives, 
I know you dudes were doing the exact same thing. The exact same thing. He said, I'm glad, uh, then he said, I'm glad you don't do that anymore. You've grown. Oh, yeah, I've grown from that, man. I'm, I've grown far from that. Those, those were the wonder years of, you know, just getting out of incarceration, just acting dang wild or when I was younger. No, I'm, that's not me anymore. I'm happy. And, and and I'm like I say, I'm happy for me as a married man. And I got a great wife, great, great life. And I'm happy for you single brothers. That's why I'm talking about this topic tonight. And, and I don't feel any type of, oh, man, I miss being single. No, I never do. You'll never hear me say that. I, won't, I don't want to be back out there with you dudes looking for a golden needle in a barn full of needles. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> okay. Marie's in the building. The same thing I told the Nika Marie. Shout out to Nika. Shout out to our sister. These nuts on strike. Monk Mo in the States. Yeah, for real. Females in the States, man, that's how you dream deferred. You focus on your goals and your dreams and everything. And all of a sudden, you just veer off to the, to the side. And you wonder, why didn't you fulfill your dreams in five years? Because you was fucking around with chicks in the States for five years. And now you looking like, man, I wish I had just stayed on Monk Mo. So I'm five eight, only make six k. That's not bad, bro. And it's still uh, enough for me, bro. Yeah, that's that's not bad at all. If you're doing your six k, sixty k, I ain't mad at you, bro. Do your thing. You're five eight, and you're feeling like five, six eight, feeling good about life. Do your thing, brother. Believe you me, because statistically, only fourteen percent of us in the world are over six feet. I don't know why women see. That's the other lie. You see what I'm saying? <coughs> Most women are not going to find a man with a six pack on a regular basis. Most of us in this podcast, we ain't no six pack motherfuckers. A couple of us, yeah. Everybody, hell no. Okay. Number two, every dude in this podcast ain't making six figures. Many are, many aren't. Cool. Every dude is not over six feet. Only 14% of men over six feet. How the fuck they go sit up there and be 80, 90% of women go sit up there and say, I want a man over six feet when it's only 14% of us on the whole planet. Could you answer that one for me? I never understood that lie. And they will look each other in their face. Yeah, girl, I want a tall man. I only date tall men. You are lying. You telling me that out of all the dudes that have, that have, that have put their dick in your ass, ma'am, you telling me all of was or, or majority was over six feet. When six footers ain't even the majority of the world. No, they will sit up there and tell that lie to each other. Yeah, girl, I like six footers. I like six footers too. I like six footers. They will lie to themselves and will sit up there and let my brother that's five eight run through them, run through them, and will try to pretend like they ain't let the five eight dude make them come last night. In the mortal words of Cat Williams, Cat Williams say they all the same size once they lay down. They cheat out. They cheat out of boredom. They ain't got nothing else to do. The husband ain't gave no compliments in a while. He ain't made them feel good. And whatever it was, whatever it was, they were going through, you know, a quiet time where, you know, he forgot to send flowers on the regular, whatever it is. But at the end of the day, here she go. Scooting her booty up under me when I was young. Or scooting herself up under you guys. He said, he said, he said, I smash wives that claim to be lonely. Husbands worked all the time. But if the husband ain't got a job, she gonna smash you because her husband ain't shit. Because he ain't got a job. That's the part about women and the lie that they tell to each other to themselves. If he's spending too much time at home, she mad. If he's spending too much time out hanging out with the fellas, she mad. Because she lonely. Man, I, I see you guys used to hear the same excuses I was hearing. He said, that's why I'm not getting married, period, in the States. I couldn't do it in the States. I ain't going to lie. And there's some good women in the States. I won't even lie. I ain't going to even front. It's some good women, feminine, fit, 
down to earth some really cool women man but the system that's the part while you're standing on this side as she's about to walk down the aisle you standing on this side you and your boys and on that side her girls the bridesmaids and you think it's just the minister in the middle no it's the minister and the system that's waiting to get you man it's a, you got to realize child support alimony the the fact that they got to process all that multi-billion dollar industry divorce is a multi-billion dollar are you crazy the government is licking their lips waiting for you to stand your stupid ass down at the bottom of the aisle and crying and shit because she walking down the aisle in a white dress <laughs> uh, the, Baby, we live happily ever after. <laughs> Meet me at the altar in your wager. We ain't getting no younger. You sitting up there just crying your ass off. She coming down the aisle with her fat ass. Her fat ass. Female family and friends and shit on the other side, the bridesmaid, they big asses over there. The system is against you. A lot of times women are not against you, but it's the system itself. It's set up for the day that 10 years from now, that sweet, innocent, fit, feminine, really down to earth, everybody like wife of yours the day that she get bored and she say and she do just like that the twin just did well I, I, I don't know if it's tia out of fucking bored and just told her husband i don't fuck with you no more let's get a divorce waiting for that moment and then the system just start going cha-ching cha-ching attorneys getting paid the system is getting paid courts getting paid child support system getting paid if y'all got kids alimony is getting paid everybody's getting paid you still got to pay the bills even though you got to leave the house the new the new dick to move in jody sport coat has moved in and he fucking your wife well why are you going through divorce court your wife screaming like she ain't screamed at you dude i'm telling you dude wives oh my god dog if i if i had a dollar for every fucking orgasm that a wife told me that her husband never gave her if i had a dollar for every one of the fucking orgasm i kid you not dog y'all know how raw i am dude if I had a dollar for every chick, and some of you dudes got stories like mine too. Females always tell them, I never felt like that. Before. I ain't never shit like that. Before. I never knew my body could do all that bullshit you hear. I ain't never knew I could swallow cum like that. All that shit they say. All of it. While you on the other side of the city living in a hotel room, still got to pay them bills for that house. Still got to make sure the kids got, got medical insurance. Still got to make sure groceries are in that house for them kids. Why are you still going through divorce court? Man, you crazy. Ain't no way in hell I'm going to live in a country like that. You crazy, man. In the name of, but I love her. All right. All right. I ain't, I ain't got nothing against love in the United States. But what I'm saying is the system is not on your side as a male. This is you. Some of you do need to ponder on this photo. That's you in the United States all the way at the bottom. We ain't even finished this video yet. You ain't even heard the, 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 the crazy part about the, high, the male hyena life. You think you heard some shit. Wait till you hear the rest of the male hyena life. When I sit back and I tell y'all, man, it ain't worth the gamble, even if she's a good one. You, I, I like what one guy said on um, what's the YouTube channel? Crew season. Shout out to them brothers. Brother asked Austin. He said, "I can't believe." He asked Austin Holloman, "Bro, I can't believe that uh, you know, you can find one good one here in, in you know Houston, my city, and you can find one good woman in Houston. You can find one in the United States, bro. In the United States, I wish." brothers and and we know sisters don't want to get it through their head but i wish brothers who asked that that question you couldn't find one bro in the united states 
It ain't about finding the one in the states. It's about the system that is against you if you find that one in the states. I want to say that again before I go to Maurice's comment. It is not about if you can find a woman in the United States. Some of y'all already know you've been fucking your ass off since you were 13 in the United States. So all that, you don't get no pussy in the United States, get the fuck out of here. That's another lie that women tell each other to make them feel better while you get your passport. Now you're fucking pussy in other countries. The fact remains, it is not that good, wholesome, southern, good cook, take care of you women that's causing a problem. It's the fact that there is a system waiting there like this, waiting for your marriage to halfway act up like it want to end, waiting for one of them kids not to be your bi biological waiting for a situation where dude like me is sucking your wife's toes while she's cheating in the ladies' room. Waiting. The system is set up to wait on your marriage to fail. It ain't you waiting on your marriage to fail. It ain't your wife. It ain't your kids. It's the system. They're sitting back saying, boy, when this motherfucker fall apart, we gonna drain him for all of it. All his gonna be ours. Yeah. Millions of men right now that are married, when you sign that marriage license, you sitting up there shaking in your boots, hoping your marriage don't never come to the end in the United States. If you got married in many other countries, you at least know you can walk away with something. But in the United States, you already know if she act like she don't want to fuck with you no more, you're going to be ass out. And I say it again. You ass out in the United States. That's what makes it so hard to be married in the United States. Not you can't find a woman, but you can't find a system that supports men in, fair, in, in, in marriage in a fair way in the United States. Why the fuck should I marry the, the greatest woman of all time in a system? That's, that's, why should I marry a woman in quicksand? Can somebody answer me that one? Why should any man marry a woman in the middle of quicksand? Just because you're going to slowly drown, you're still going to drown. Getting a woman in the U.S. is easy, dude. If, 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 if dude, fuck it in the U.S., in all sincerity. And this, this is the part about women, the other lie that women tell when it comes to sex. Women will lie to each other about how much they fucking and how much they sucking. Women will sit up there and look each other bare face lie. I don't do anal. I've never had a threesome. I don't do white boys. You not you lying mother. You was with Craig as last month on a cruise. Doing a threesome while he was in your ass. And you will come back and have a glass of wine with your girlfriends and be like, yeah, that is nasty, girl. Mm -mm, white boy, white balls. Mm -mm, I would never let a white man. Mm -mm, ain't no, ooh, that's nasty. Ooh, a threesome? Mm -mm, no, ugh, no, I, I'm private will sit up there and tell a bare-faced lie about their sex life. A bare-faced lie will look everybody in that room and, and you know the truth. Like, so you want to... So, Grandmama, you just going to lie like that. <laughs> Grandmama, you just going to lie like that. <clears throat> Grandma, you just got off the church cruise. Stop it. For real. It's set up like that, Jay. It's set up just like that. Getting a woman in the United States, it's easy, dude. Please. Please. Women in the United States, please. Easy fucks. And they know it. And that's why they try to distract with the passport bros. Y'all just going to these other countries because you can't get anybody in the United States. We done ran through y'all asses. It ain't a culture most of us ain't fucked yet. The only only brothers that's only slept with sisters, you did that shit on purpose because you had you had the opportunity to fuck white girls, Asian girls. You just didn't take advantage of it. 
it's so much multicultural pussy in the United States that you just did, you just decided that you only want to sleep with sisters. But if you wanted just one day to wake up in the morning, like tomorrow morning, and say I'm fucking all redheads, guess what? You're gonna be fucking in the United States. That's how easy it is. You're gonna be fucking redheads for the next six months, like you Tommy on power. It's so easy to run through women in the United States. Some of y'all been banned from certain apps you didn't fuck so much. Oh, you can't come back to this app. You didn't fuck and hurts too many hearts. So when women try to act like, well, you just you go to those because you can't get in it. We'd have ran through y'all. The fat girls at the cute fat girl with the dimple that when you drunk. You wouldn't go never have sex with her in the daylight, but you know you drunk, you got a buzz going on, so you like, come on through, girl, bring it, bring your fat ass on through, huh? bring your big ass on through. The big, the big chick with the big butt but the small waistline, you go ahead and smash her, but you kick her ass out before the sun come out. Ain't no snoring, ain't, ain't gonna be rolling your sweaty ass on my silk sheets. You got to go. I was smashing you on the couch. Her, she ain't gonna tell how many bodies she got. The petite chick that's like the ex cheerleader, she ain't gonna tell how many damn jocks ran through her in high school, and then how many dudes ran through her through in college, and then the corporate corporate dick she been getting ever since then. She ain't telling all that. The white girls with the fetish. I, I'm not attracted to, to black men. It's you. Okay. You weren't saying all that when you was calling me nigga in the middle of an orgasm. Nigga, fuck me. You weren't saying all that then. Now you want to go back home, go back to, to your side of the city with your co-workers. I don't, I don't mess with black guys. I'm just not attracted to them. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, you had them all. So when it come to travel, you like. I tell dudes that's thirsty. Don't be thirsty in Colombia or in Brazil. Don't come down to these countries thirsty. Quench your thirst in the United States and come down here and take your time and enjoy your, your time getting to know the ladies and enjoy yourself and smash who you want to smash. But you dudes that come to South America, you act all thirsty. You moving too fast, bro. You can quench your thirst. In this dude, oh my god, bro, man, dude, the dastardly D's. The times I was tying them to the train tracks, I'm telling you. Man, boy, I'm talking about I was twisting my mustache like this, dude. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. He said, he said, he said, I don't care. He said, he says, uh, I don't care what I can, uh, I can't get in the United States. Uh, you don't want it. He said, I just want a woman that won't divorce and take half of it all when i succeed well you be looking for a, a needle in a stack of needles in the united states looking for that woman that the that twins husband tia on that television show the view as far as we know he ain't done shit wrong he ain't been whooping up on our ass he ain't we ain't know about him cheating nothing all we ever see is a photo of him with with the with the kid with the shorties he ain't, we don't never see no, we ain't never seen that brother doing no bullshit. And she just from out of nowhere, and I knew she was going to divorce him. When I saw her putting all you single ladies-ish photos on Instagram, and she was still married, I was like, oh, something wrong. I said, because she ain't never posted no photos like that. I say, so, okay. Then six months later, she divorcing this bro. Man, and the system gonna go against him before it go against her. You better believe that. Black women uh, on black people meet nuts bucket <laughs> for real. White girl with that fetish, my stomach hurts for real. Shout out to Andrew with the super chat. 
He says, salute, you are preaching tonight. If the system doesn't get you, the woman will join the system to get you, and then you are screwed. And that's what the party is. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. They've got something to join, like Andrew was saying. They ain't got to deal with us when it comes to divorce solo. The courts are going to make you, when the last time, it's rare that you, let's put it like this, it's rare when you see the courts make the woman pay for your attorney and her attorney during a divorce. Who they usually come to, ask lead attorney. They're going to come for your pockets, for her attorney and your attorney, and you still got to pay all the bills, and you're going to end up paying child support, and you might end up having alimony because you're a, a dude that bust his butt and succeeded in life. Now you got to pay the piper for it. In other words, hear this again, because you worked hard in life and you thought I'm at that point, I want to have a family, you establish a family, but because she decided to get bored and fuck a dude like me on the side and leave you because you ain't gave her an orgasm in seven years and she just had seven last night fucking with dudes like me, you got to pay out of all your success. All them years you done bust your ass. All them years on computer when you was falling asleep in front of the computer, putting together your game plan. All those years when you sat up there, work at the at the factory or at the foundry or whatever you was working at and working on these machineries and shit. All them years that you was getting patents for shit and creating and inventing shit and it finally worked for you. And now you got good money. You're doing good. And you're almost six figures and seven figures and almost eight figures. I don't care if you're Dr. Motherfucking Dre. They coming for that ass. They coming for that ass. At the end of the day, the system is not set up for the rich man. It is not set up for the poor man. It is not set up for any males. It's just not. And I wish some dudes would get it through their mind, through their heads. No matter how rich you are, you at the you as a male in the United States, you are the hyena at the bottom. You are not the female hyena and her cubs at the top. You never have been and you never will be. The American system itself would collapse. It would freaking collapse if they had everything set up for the man to benefit. And not just a woman. I'm going to say that again. You, We don't even have to be dominant over them. Just 50-50. But the system is not set up for that. We do not do most of the voting. We do not buy or purchase most of the products. 70% of all the products in most homes, where there's a male or female in there. Okay, for all you dudes that you stand with your girlfriend or your wife or something, look around your shit. Look at how much shit you bought. And how much shit she she put her hands into them beds, the couch, the refrigerator, the living room suit, the damn car down there, clothes, what's gonna be in the refrigerator, what's in the cabinets, spoons, forks, knives, plates. I could easily say in my home. About 70 to 80 percent of all that's been purchased was purchased by Andrea's decision. I wasn't sitting around like, yeah, we got to have this particular couch. She showed me, but for the most part, I was like, is it comfortable? So at the end of the day, we don't we don't have the the the, the power, the, the, the economic power to stand up and say anything, no matter what color you are as a man. I don't care if it's all white dudes stand up. White dudes don't purchase as much as white women. They don't vote as much as white women. And that's why white dudes go and make towel. Men go their own way. Because they end up looking like the damn male hyenas at the, bottom, at the bottom, eating bones and shit. He says, he said, uh, uh, he said, I took my sons when they, he said, I took my sons when they were two and they were three, got a lawyer filed for divorce and the courts in Kansas city put me through financial hell. I was just on a, a Philip Scott channel. He was saying the same thing. He said, when his son was 12 years old, he was trying to fight for custody of his son. He said he went through hell. He said, I, sp I think he said, I spent $13,000 or $16,000 in regards to fighting the course to get his son when his son was 12 years old. 
Uh, he said, I never gave them. Uh, he said, I never gave them back, meaning the sons, and I raised them. Best decision I ever made. Shout out to you, brother. Shout out to you. I kid you not. Kenny Peebles in the building. Shout out to you, Kenny. He said, I'm, I'm enjoying my singleness. Yes, enjoy your singleness, man. Don't be letting these, once again, do not let these women try to convince you through social media and shame you into getting married overseas. If you met somebody so special, if the women overseas were so wonderful, you said you went to another country to meet your wife, then why, why you ain't got a wife? You don't owe them no excuse. Why you didn't get married the first time you came to Colombia? First time you zoomed to Thailand, all of a sudden you're supposed to be walking down an aisle? They wouldn't do that shit. So how the heck they expect you to do it? Shout out to Kelvin in the building. They expect you to do this. Boys, and growing up, he said, I got custody. And they're now 31 and, and 32. Shout out to you, man. You raised him, man. You raised him. Shout out to you. Gramercy said this. He said, my boy just got a divorce from a chick that he they had a kid by before they met. And they had a kid together. Now he's on the hook for child support for both kids, meaning his stepson and his real shorty. Or stepdaughter. Child support. The system waits around. It's waiting around. <coughs> Excuse me. Every All of us got stories to tell. All of us have stories to share. And these are all facts. And women don't want to hang around for all these truths. They always want to talk about, well, what about all the fathers that's not there for their children? And all, I, I've seen all these single mothers. Single mothers, statistically, you do know that you having babies by only 10% to 20% of all men in the United States. And usually it's the ain't shit dudes that y'all having most of y'all babies by. Y'all do know this, right? Y'all ain't having babies by all of us good dudes. There's enough of us good dudes that have kids, but the majority of the kids of women have two or three baby daddies. Who want? Man, whenever it was time for me to have sex with a woman that had two or three baby daddies, I'm going to tell y'all something. I used to be like slightly, slightly paranoid. Because I got to bring that thing with me. Why? Because I don't know which one of them fools going to be jealous, busting down the door. I know if one got some sense, the other one ain't got no damn sense in his head. So I, while I'm banging her out, I got to have that thing with me. This ain't worth it. And what would, what would I do with her? Be baby daddy number three if we decide to have a child? That's not about to happen. That is not about to happen. So at the end of the day, remember, first thing that's never going to change is the system. Number two is the dating arena. Women are going to still want to drain your pockets. I'm sorry, bro. They still want to drain your pockets. That's it. If you think that in the United States, women are going to be like here in Colombia, where you could take them out for ice cream cone, and the next day you go get you some coochie because you're a good dude and she a good woman. Y'all like each other. It ain't going to happen. If you think that you know how many coffee dates that I had when I came down, I ain't never had no coffee dates in the States. How many of y'all had a coffee date? I may have had a smoothie date, but I ain't never had a coffee date. Most date in the United States, you got to go all motherfucking out, even if it's for a, a brunch. They want you to press them from the moment. It's a, it could be a blind date, and they still want you to press them. Down here, I don't know what it is about ice cream, but as soon as she get a cone in her hand, you the coolest dude that she ever met, no matter what age she is. Like Andrea said, and, her, and, and, and uh, Afro Wahita said, and my girl D, shout out to D, Tours by D, they all said the same thing. Colombian women don't date, we hang out. Colombia, that's that's some shit that we learned in the United States. Colombians don't fucking date. 
you i have dude when i was single when i before i knew andrea when i discovered that that took so much pressure off of me and my wallet <laughs> i don't have to date all i gotta do is hang out you mean i ain't got to take a colombian chick to the best restaurant in the city even though it's not that expensive, it's just the fact that arena is not going to change anytime too soon in the United States, guys. You still will be coming out of pocket. I was one of those dudes. I had got to a point in the United States. I kid you not. First time I'm telling this. I stopped dating because it wasn't worth the expenses. Not because I couldn't afford the expenses. But dating four chicks and paying for four lunches, four dinners, or whatever it was, it wasn't worth it. The pussies wasn't worth it. I'm like, I'm paying for dinner for, with four, and I might fuck too. It ain't worth it. Even if you got the money, it just economically it don't add up. you like, shit, if I'm only fucking two out of four, but I'm paying for four, economically that doesn't add up. I got enough condoms for all four, but I, economically sleeping with them, this, this shit don't add up. So why am I sleeping with four females? I mean, why am I paying for four? That helped me on Monk Bowl for real. I was like, man, I ain't money. That's for real, man. That shit was not, not worth it. Let me scroll down here. He said 15 cents and 15 cents an ounce a week. Average black woman. 50 C's 15. Look at 15 cents. But hey, Kenny. Let me let me know what you mean by that. Shout out to my neighbor, Kenny. OK, I think I just checked that one out. Shame, insults, guilt need to be right. Yep. That shame, that sign language, man. They try to, they try to make you feel guilty. Cause you know why they do that? They learned it from. I'm tell you, I'm tell you who they learned all that from. Y'all ready? Our moms, our aunties, and our grandmas. Cause that's how they talk to us when we we're coming up as boys, as single mothers. Let's be real. My, I, I came with a single mom, so don't be thinking I'm coming at mothers. What I'm saying is, our mom. Boy, if you don't get your nasty ass out your god, what you what look at what is that damn smell? Boy, you get your ass in there. You get on my god, you act like a damn like you ain't got nobody raised your stupid ass. All these insults. And you don't notice it because everybody else getting cussed out by their mama too. And your sister sat back watching your mama cussing you out. And then she grew up cussing out her boyfriend. Or guys that was dating her. And you grew up hearing that shit and not saying nothing about it. Why? Because you ain't say nothing about it when mom was doing it. Why? Because that's mom. You ain't gonna say nothing when grandma say, Well, you're gonna get your nasty ass in there and wash your what you stinking, boy. I know you just got done playing football now. Go wash your ass. We used to it. Nobody tells us that as men. We're used to sign language. We're used to exactly what he's talking about. We got this from our mamas, our grandmamas, and our aunties. And I ain't going to sit up here and pretend like I didn't because I know in my family I did. I got some mean-ass aunts. They're the sweetest ladies that you ever want to meet. But if you tick them off, you're going to get shame, insults, guilt, and the need to be right because I'm the auntie. I'm your grandmama. I'm your mama, boy. That's why I'm right. And then when you start dating, you go through the same shit. Why? Like I said, your sisters and your cousins, your female cousins sat up there and watch all of us males go through this shit from the single moms and aunties that had that we had in our families. And so they took it and just spread that shit nationwide. And none of us as men want to admit that part because that's my mama. That's my grandma. That's my mama. Grandmama. That's my heart. I don't care. I'm willing to be a man in my 50s. I'm willing to admit the shit that we learned. Some of it wasn't right. It didn't help our manhood. The fact that my mom was single and my mom told me she apologized. When I got older, she apologized. She said, Andre, I was hard on you. She said, I thought because 
I was a single mom. Your dad had died. I thought I was, you know, I, I thought this how military. She said this. She said, I thought it was military to just be hard on you. It's one way that masculine men communicate with each other, like football coaches or your 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 commanders in the military. It's another way where you don't expect your mama to talk like that to you. And my mama talked like that to me. And my grandmama did. And my aunties did. And my and my I watched my sister just talk to this day. Candy talk like we say, talk greasy. Just talk greasy and this this reckless at the mouth. Because they saw, they saw, they sat back and saw. They sat back and watched us as men have to sit at 16. You taller than your mama, and you looking down at your mama, and you can't say shit. And your sister saw you standing there in front of a woman and you couldn't say shit. So she took that and she thought that all men are like that. I could use shame, shame, insults, guilt, and a need to be right because his tall ass ain't going to say shit. He ain't going to do shit. And that's where it came from. That's exactly where that came from. And it'll keep going because my sister's daughters will watch that shit. And that my sister's daughter's friends will watch that you see what i'm saying it'll keep going to the next generation of girls that's the only that's that's why i'm like why you expect me to be a traditional man when ain't nothing traditional about the women in the united states the dating game number two the reason why you should enjoy your singleness the dating game is not set up for you anymore if I keep trying to let you guys know that you're looking for a golden needle in a in a barn full of needles, dude, it is not set up for you to win. It is always set up in the dating situation for the woman to win. Do you think that just because you got the pussy that you won? Brother, I was getting the pussy and I knew that was a losing game. You got the pussy, right? You came out of what three dates? Three dates at like a hundred fifty, two hundred dollars, maybe seventy five dollars sometime a piece. So you end up paying one hundred fifty dollars in three dates <coughs> to almost let's say four hundred for three days. That doesn't include the gas in your car to drive over to her shit, pick her up, take her to the restaurant, drop her happy ass off. You ain't get the pussy the first three three dates. And to go back home with some blue balls. Or let's say you got the pussy the first date and it still were more dates after that until you let her go. Some of us have paid. How much? Let's be real, fellas. Come on. Let's do the economics of this shit. Some pussy we got. Some of us have kicked out two, three thousand dollars by the time we got done fucking that chick. Some of you dudes have kicked out 15,000. You fucked the chick for nine months. You flew her here. Y'all went there. Y'all hung out here. Y'all laughing here. Y'all going to the club, drinking it, turning it up, paying, getting in out of the club. You taking her to the movies. Valentine's Day come. Her birthday come. Christmas come. You paying out the ass. But you only been fucking her. That's all you wanted was a pussy. By the time you got done fucking her in that year and a half, your ass came out of between $5,000 and $15,000. You think that you actually won, huh? You actually think that you won because you got that pussy, huh? For 15, which pussy that y'all had that's worth five to 15,000? I know I paid a quite a, a pretty penny, and ain't none of them been worth 15,000. And I know I've come out of I'm like, man, I was fucking her for three years. I took over here. We, we drove over there. I went over to mama house. I, I brought my mama a gift. I remember about that time when a car broke down and she needed a new goddamn uh transmit transmission in that motherfucker and i just all that shit that the little bits the little things flowers cards whatever it is all that shit add up just for you to be fucking that bitch for a year and a half in my case could have been three years in my case could have been three weeks fucking the united states dog you paying the price you think that you talk out of some pussy on the first night, but as long as you kept fucking after that, your motherfucking wallet getting thinner and thinner and thinner, the more money you make. And for some of y'all, y'all making good money, so you don't give a fuck, but you still paying like the rest of us, they give a fuck. Some of y'all making good money, and you don't give a fuck. That 15000 to fuck up for three years wasn't shit. But you still pay fifteen thousand, like the rest of us. They give a fuck. 
The dating game in the United States is not going to change. It's going to get more expensive like child support. You think child support, they say raising a child from one, I mean, from, from birth to 18 is now $300,000. Three hundred thousand dollars for each each one of them nuts that made it to the to the egg. Shout out to our children, which I ain't got no kids yet. But shout out to the kids. You do realize that the dating industry is the same situation. It's gonna get more expensive. You think restaurants the price gonna go down or is it gonna go up? The purses. Do you think the prices of a purse for Christmas is gonna go down or go up? What about them high heels that you would love to see her in when she walking in lingerie? Is that price of that lingerie and them heels going to go down or go up? What about the time when she ain't got a few dollars and she needs you to put some gas in her car? Is the gas price going to go down or the motherfucker's going to eventually go back up? How long you fuck her? A year and a half? Calculate how much money you didn't spend in a year and a half of fucking her. I don't care if it was just five hundred dollars. I don't care if it was five thousand dollars. But you pay some price as a man to keep getting that pussy. The dating game number two is not going to change. So you might as well enjoy your singleness in the states and enjoy it, especially with your passport outside the states. Don't let nobody shame you into you. You 40 years old. You 45. You 51. You should be married by now. No, you shouldn't. You should be married or in a stable relationship when you ready. If you ever ready. Yeah, it's a miracle to get you a good coffee date in. Uh, you want to just do some coffee? Why? Sure. Damn, I like you. The final said he said I had a guy bust in the room while I was sleeping in bed with a woman that left Mac at, he said I left that Mac at home I was like damn yeah man I had to keep that thing on me bro on that thing on me baby mamas and I tell you what what made me do that one winner kid you not Stefano y'all know I got a story one winner I'm in the bed with this chick she got two kids nice chick very fit feminine you see what I'm saying? I'm breaking her back in. Her phone blowing up. It's like 1 o'clock, 1.30 in the morning. Snow everywhere. Snow everywhere. Ain't nobody supposed to be on this damn blizzard. All Her phone st steady ringing. She look at it. She put it back down. I'm like, I don't give a damn who it is as long as I'm up in you. I don't care. All of a sudden, get banging on the door. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Let me in. I want to see my kids. This the baby daddy. He drunk than a motherfucker. So I'm in here ready to go click clock. Because I don't know this drunk mother. The kids in bed sleep. So kids ain't. These are little kids. Kids ain't trying to see nobody at night except Santa. So who the hell come to see some little kids at? I want to see my blue, 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 blue. I say you want me to open the door? No, no, don't you don't have to open it. He's gonna go away. He's gonna, he's gonna I'll call him, I'll talk to him. And so maybe like 15, 20 minutes, blah, 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 blah. Kids wake up. Who's that? Daddy, we want to see our daddy. So now it's like 2 30 in the morning. Kids up screaming at the door, like they screaming for Santa Claus. This mother screaming, I want you my kids. Snowstorm everywhere. I'm ready to put some heat, and she on the phone trying to calm calm this motherfucker down at the same time, put the kids back to bed. I'm like, this ain't worth it. You don't give head good enough for this moment in time. This ain't worth You got, girl, you got a beautiful booty, but it ain't that beautiful. You got the sweetest little kids. They ain't my kids. I went on here, got dressed. I had my thing in my hand as I walked out the door. I opened that door. I'm like, the wind came. He he looking like he stepped back because he's just expecting the, uh, 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 the woman to be there. He stepped back. I'm, I'm walking out the door with my Timbo's on. I'm like, all right, dog, you can go on in there, dog. I walked by and right on down the stairs. She looking stupid. He looking stupid. This ain't worth it. This ain't worth it. The dating game in the United States, it ain't worth it. It really isn't.
Number three, number three thing that's not going to change in the United States. So you might as well enjoy your single life, embrace your single life with traveling. How modern women treat you. So y'all think it's going to change. <coughs> you think all of a sudden they're going to start showing less commercials with women on women enter, you know, hugging and kissing on a commercial. And all of a sudden they're going to just go back to showing regular everyday families with fathers and mothers. Oh, you think it's going to go back, huh? You think feminism gonna come to an end because a couple of women said we wanna we we're done paying our own bills. We we need a man. The economy is so tight, we need a man in our life. Wait a minute. You think because a couple of women ran up at the mouth? I'm gonna get to your super chats, brother. Thank you for letting me thank you for the super chat. You think because shout out to Jay and the ice cream. You think because she sat back and she all do you think that all of a sudden she's going to stop being a feminist and be submissive in the united states where she's got the law the system and the police force behind her back and the and the judicial system meaning the courts okay answer this one for me what does it benefit her to come back to your ass. You ain't got no police force. White boys ain't even got the judicial system on they on their side. They they paying child support out the ass like the rest of us. Or alimony or anything else that had to do with the courts. So you can't just sit back and say, well, a white boy, no. Courts, that, that's one area that they don't give a fuck. They want every every male's money. What benefit for a woman to come back to you and be submissive? What is the benefit for women to, to be submissive and traditional and give you a hot plate? What's the benefit in the States? Come on, fellas. Since y'all want the women in the States to be so, to be church moms and shit and, and grow old on the side, on your side and be the mothers like your grandmother was. What's the benefit that she going to get from that? Because technically, right now, the way the United States is set up, there is no benefit for being a traditional woman. She's going to be scrutinized. She's going to be put down. She's going to be mocked by other women. What woman? Women lie to each other so they don't get mocked. You think a woman going to sit up there and be traditional? And every we at the we at the barbecue. We at the family reunion. It's a family reunion. Shout out to the OJs, right? All the mothers and wives and girlfriends are there. Men standing up with their paper plate going over there to get a hot dog or, or a hamburger or a veggie burger or a piece of corn or a piece of ribs. Only woman standing in line is your woman with two plates, one for her and one for her man. And she brings the plates over and then goes back and gets you some fresh beverage. And she puts it down and she has her meal with her man. She ain't over there with the ladies. She's having a meal with her man. You ain't over there with the fellas eating, talking shit. You over here with your woman. Do you know after that meal, all hell going to break loose in womandom? All them ladies, as soon as they get a split second, all your aunties, female cousins, your lady friends, nieces, all them ladies going to gather in a circle around her and be looking at her and talking to her like, what the fuck are you doing? I'm traditional. You can take that traditional shit back to whatever country you came from. You do not bring that tradition of love and care and concern for your husband or your boyfriend to this country. We don't do that here. They will ridicule your woman and run her, man. They come with pitchforks and axes for your woman. If she dare act like she traditional, 
They have no benefit. There is no, there is nothing beneficial except except when they hit the financial, parental, spiritual, and physical wall. Now they need a man. Once they hit the financial wall, I can't afford these kids by myself. Now they hit the spiritual wall. God wants me because they're a Christian. God wants me to have my husband. Okay, we're going to start with that right there. Do you know how much church pussy I done got in the name of God told me you was the one for me, Andre? You know how many times I done got my dick sucked by church mother's daughters? In the name of God told me that you're the one. And now tell me, fellas, am I the only one that had heard that shit? Once I say it, once again, I say women lie. Dude, I done had church women tell me, sit me down in a business meeting. True story. Like it was a business meeting. Let me take you out to lunch, Brother Spence. All right, cool. That's great. Let's, let's go out to lunch. And I see that I'm freezing, guys. Thank you for your patience. Let's go out to lunch. Um, brother Spence, I, I don't need a man. I just need somebody to, to basically for intimacy, at least once or twice a week. Um, would you be willing to be that person? I'm like, ain't you the pastor's daughter? We sitting up there talking like I'm writing down a list like, like, okay, now, now you want me to be your, your, your boy toy, right? Okay. Yeah. You, 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 you know, you suck dick, right? You, you pull it. So, okay. You. You suck it from the front and you pull the dick from the back. Okay, cool. Okay. What else do you do? Oh, oh you, you do that? Okay, all right. All right. I'm sitting up there negotiating with a church sister over how I'm be fucking her twice a week. There is no benefit for them to go back to traditional. A church sister. They didn't want the tradition of the relationship. It doesn't benefit them. That she said, I don't want a relationship. I've had more than one church sister tell me, I don't want a relationship. I just want the intimacy. I just need a man to touch me, a man to make me feel good about like, like, like old girl, Holly Berry. I want to feel good. Make me feel good. Feel, feel good. That shit. We got 77 in the in the stream. We've had up to 80. Make sure you guys click that like button. I appreciate you. I like you. Make sure you like us too. Shout out to my man in the building for the super chat. He said, do you recommend that we learn Spanish before visiting South America? If you want to meet the real Colombiana with, a, with two O's, no you, women, and avoid uh, gringo chasers. Um, in all sincerity... Y'all, you guys already know, I always say how, how, how trash my Spanish is. And mine was trash before. Where's that? Oh, here it is. My telephone right in front of me. Do you know when I first came to Colombia, how much goddamn Google Translator pussy I was getting? You know how many dates I went on full-fledged dates? It was getting Google Translator pussy. From regular women. Now, mind you, I wouldn't get the pussy the first day for many of them, but the next day, they were like, you know, I like you. I will fuck you today. Okay, cool. And down here, also, a lot more women are starting to slowly pick up Spanish. I mean, I mean English. I mean, a lot more women down here now, man, that that know English. And they, I don't see how they be doing that shit. They be like, well, I watch a little television, a little music, and now I know English. I'm like, how the f I cannot do that with Spanish for nothing. I wish I could just listen to a couple of songs and watch a couple of television shows and bam, I know Spanish. But they do it. So when it comes to gringo chasing, here's the part. And I mean this, bro. This is the secret. Always remember you are getting off that plane in the top 10% of incomes in South America. 
Brazil, Ecuador, Argentina, with their high inflation going through ass, just like Brazil, Colombia, Uruguay, Paraguay. Bruh, you are a top 10 percenter in most of these countries. The reason why you get or deal with gringo chasers, because y'all keep fucking or chasing after or allowed to chase after you, bottom 10% of the women economic. If you dudes, if you dudes actually saw the shack or barrio or prevella, how poor them fine motherfuckers be in some of them the clubs that y'all the them sexy month when y'all be up in Sasua. Y'all be like, oh, she up in this club, she fine. Well, y'all be like, oh, she up in these. Oh, I see at the clock tower in Cartagena. If you just asked her, I give you $50 to take me to your house. And you saw what they live in, and you look back at her, you think of like, the fuck? You dudes always run to the bottom 10% of women when it comes to economics. <coughs> Stop that shit. How do you tell the difference? You know the difference. You know the difference. Getting off the plane if a bitch ain't shit. Ain't got shit. If she telling you she ain't got no job to go to, she got all the time in the world for you, you meet her and y'all together every day, and you ain't caught on to that shit because you a vacationer and you just so happy that somebody can suck your dick at will. You getting gringo. You fucking with the bottom 10%. Y'all love broke bitches. And, and if you and that's what you into, cool. Well, Dre, you can't you. I'm not counting your dollars. I'm counting hers. You see what I'm doing? I'm not counting. Your money, I just said you're in the top 10% when you get off the plane. I'm counting this broke bitch money. She just a beautiful bottom feeder. And y'all keep hanging out and fuck with beauty. And then y'all, I love when y'all do this shit. And then you want to call me and Andrea for a double date. Man, Andrea be looking at y'all like, nigga, please. Y'all be having us rolling when y'all be like, oh, Andrea, I'm in Cali. And we're going to double, no, the fuck we ain't. My wife is not part of the bottom 10%. She wasn't when I met her. So why the fuck would I introduce her to some broke bitch that you so happen to be dating? They got all the time in the world. If you got a female that ain't got no time where she can say, well, you know, I could be with you on how long you here? Seven days? Well, I could be with you like after five o'clock for four of those days. That's what you want. You want to have a female that got something that can show you the city. She ain't never been around the city. She don't know nothing about her own city. She been living in Cali for how long? All her whole life? And all she know is hood shit? She ain't never been to a nice restaurant? Dude, it's females here that ain't never been to a nice restaurant. One of my partners a couple days ago told me, he said, man, I took this chick. I said, man, oh, man she, she was nice. She was cute. She was cool. He said, Dre, she'd never been to a restaurant. I said, what he said this female had never i mean she was very sweet the, it's the nicest just sexy sister she was really nice really nice person she'd never been to her i'm like get the fuck out. i said why y'all like fuck with these chicks that i said you got over 15 million women in in colombia why the fuck y'all be If you can get past that, it's not the language that's going that, that keeps dudes getting drugged. I'm going to say this because dudes that's fluent in Spanish, they ask get drugged with scopamine too. So what's the problem? It ain't the language that's killing them or getting them caught up. It's the fact that they keep fucking with beautiful bottom feeders. Number two, the fact that y'all so fucking impatient. You get off the plane. It's just like, so if it was up to y'all, it will be a bitch sucking your dick on the runway getting off the plane. You don't know how to be patient for shit. You so fucking thirsty, man. Dudes be too fucking thirsty. Getting off the plane, straight off the runway. If it was up to y'all, y'all be getting bitches to kiss each other right on the goddamn plane. 
Every area ain't Shangri-La. Every area is not Treasure Island. Remember, Treasure Island came from the book Pinocchio. What happened to them kids in Pinocchio? They went in as kids having a ball. When they left, there was all jackasses. I've seen plenty of jackasses get back on planes, head back to the States. This is Treasure Island for a lot of y'all. You got to stop that shit. Acting all thirsty and shit. That's why I say quench your thirst while you're in the States. Fuck all them easy to fuck bitches over there. Come to Colombia and Brazil and shit. Act like you got some damn, act like you've been here before. Act like you done had some pussy before. It ain't the Spanish that get dudes caught up. It ain't one dude that I said that I've ever met. It was like, man, I got drugged. Why? Because I didn't know Spanish. What the fuck not knowing Spanish got to do with a bitch slipping goddamn scuba in your drink? Or putting some scope of mean on a nipple and shit, and you sucking a damn nipple, and you passed out. What the fuck does that got to do with you knowing Spanish? None of it. Not a bit of it, brother. Just be careful and remember get with women that got something going on. I don't care if it's a little something, I don't care if you meet her at the counter in the mall and she's working at that mall store you a know where she works b you know she got a job c she ain't gonna be all up under you all day long because she ain't got the she ain't got time to be like that and d she's sexy than a motherfucker she liked you because she gave you her phone number she ain't got a corporate job but at least you know she got some some but y'all love going up under them goddamn clock towers and shit. Y'all love going to goddamn Sasua. You love trying to find some bitches walking the streets of Thailand. You're lazy. Fucking lazy, man. I, that should be getting, dude. If I was single, 90% of dudes, you wouldn't be around me. Hell no. You ain't got no fucking game. You don't, you ain't got no, I'm not talking about game to get the women. I'm talking about game and which ones to avoid. I'm going to say that again. The reason why I don't fuck with everybody if I was single, because they ain't got enough game to know who to fuck with and who not to fuck with. That's why I don't hang out with everybody. Not because y'all can't get pussy, but y'all keep choosing the wrong pussy. And I don't want to be around when you choose the wrong pussy. Why the fuck should I be the dude reviving your ass? Because I know how to get chicks that got jobs. Well, some of them regular chicks do. Chicks with regular jobs ain't out here drugging motherfuckers. Not most of them. Nope. Nope. You can sell that shit to somebody else. You ain't gonna find no chick with no car drugging motherfuckers out here. You might find a motorcycle bitches, but a chick with a car and a mortgage? Get the fuck out of here. A chick with a degree? When the last time you heard a motherfucker say a chick had a master's degree and she drugged me? It was the bitch that worked down at the city county building. She drug me. No, nope, nigga, no. No. Bitches that got something to lose ain't about to lose what they got for your ass. I'm going to say that again. Bitches that got something to lose ain't about to lose what they got for your only going to be here for five days ass. It be them beautiful, sexy, gorgeous, green eyed, fat butt, small waist, entertaining, funny, soft-spoken ass bottom feeders that always trick y'all asses every time. That's why I stopped feeling sorry for y'all. And I got so many YouTubers pissed at me because I don't feel sorry for motherfuckers no more. Andre, he almost died. That's his motherfucking fault. We've been warning. You got DC Rob and you got Razor Ray and everybody else been on YouTube trying to tell y'all stop fucking with them broke ass bitches. And y'all still will run y'all happy ass down here. And as long as a bitch is sexy, y'all still want to fuck them. Man, and y'all want, then you want your brothers to feel sorry for your ass. Oh, hell no. Them days are over. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I ain't hold it. No more more eulogies. No more t shirts with your face on it and shit. No more motherfucking putting out a shout out. I want to give a shout out for my brother that died in Medellin because he was fucking with them broke bitches. No more of that shit. That shit is done. I don't feel sorry for none of you motherfuckers that get caught up. Not a one. Even if some of you dudes I've been knowing outside of youtube for five years if you get caught up like my partner around the corner when he got caught up i looked at his ass when he told me the story i was like i can see that shit look right at that nigga oh, yeah 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 i can see your ass getting drugged yeah and finish ordering my food i don't feel sorry for none of your asses and i'm not saying this in an egotistical way but it gets tiring it gets tiring letting dudes know that there are so 
many good women in South America, so many waiting for your ass to come down. They've been, do you know how many fucking Afro Colombians been waiting to suck some American dick? They ain't never had no American dick in their mouth. No regular ass Colombian dudes. And as soon as you come down here, they've been waiting to suck your dick. And she's a school teacher. But what do you do? You go scampering your asses up in Parque Yeris and El Poblado. You go get you some pay for play. Because your ass impatient and you thirsty than a motherfucker. I don't be feeling sorry for none of them dudes, man. None of them. I ain't read one story. And this the other part. Usually it's an ugly bitch. Y'all love some fat, ugly bitches drugging y'all. I ain't never seen. When the, okay. I can't name. Can anybody in the comment section name the last time you saw a dude getting drugged and they showed the female and it was a bad bitch? Like every blue moon, ain't it? Most of the time, it'd be some fat out of shape bitch that in drugs some dude. Or some regular looking ass chick where you was like, is that who drugged him? Is this a regular bitch? And y'all be talking about some, I'm going a, I'm to a give me a pay for play. I'm looking like, if I'm a pay for play, you know how bad that bitch going to be? If I was in a pay for play world, you better believe I'm paying for some bad bitches. I ain't doing that thrift shopping shit that y'all be doing. Y'all be coming down here thrift shopping pussy. Goddamn goodwill pussy. Y'all be thrift shopping all in Medellin, thrift shopping all in Sasua, thrift shopping in Thailand and shit, thrift shopping in Brazil. Be, we be seeing y'all pay for play photos. Some of them be some, some bad bitches, but most of them be looking like, that's is that it? That's a... The best that you can do is that. So you you flew all the way to Brazil like 11 hours for the regular pussy? If I'm flying to Brazil, you better believe it's going to be some, and I'm single, it's going to be some braggadocious pussy. It's going to be some pussy that just stepped off of somebody's runway. You better believe that. I didn't fly, fly no goddamn 11 hours for some regular ass Brazilian looking pussy. Get the fuck out of here. And I'm paying for it? Mm-mm. No. No, 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 no. Mm-mm. If I give me some pay for play, that bitch gonna be fine like Cassidy, uh, 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 uh Diddy's ex girlfriend. I'm on a bad bitch. I want to. I want a big curly afro type of chick. Big, the big, biggest curliest afro I can find and shit. With with big ass breasts and she's chocolatey in a motherfucker. All that hair is hers. She only need lip gloss. She's so fine. She don't need no makeup. Ass is fat and she can samba with the best of them. I want one of the motherfuckers that perform every year in the motherfucking Brazilian festival. I want her to be like, Andre, I can't come over tonight. I got rehearsals. Them the bitches I'll be paying for. Y'all motherfuckers be paying for some goddamn granimals and shit. Straight zoomorphic bitches. And y'all be looking at me like, y'all look at me crazy like, Andre, don't you feel sorry for him? Did you see the bitch that he can let drug him? He should be dishonored. <laughs> shit. Okay, so he said, bro, everything, everything here is so expensive. It's hard. Let me scroll down a little bit. Shout out to you, Mikey, for the uh, for the super chat, by the way. He said, uh, it's so expensive. It's hard for the average dude to come up. Definitely have uh, definitely have to be above average to make out gas, car, house. Yeah, man. You already got your own personal bills to pay on. Then you just try to be a regular dude, just try to date somebody in the States. It's too fucking expensive. It's too expensive. You know what? I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna give y'all one of my secrets. You ready? One of the reasons why I used to date rich bitches, because I ain't had to come out of money like that. Them bitches pay for everything. Regular chicks, mm -mm. I was dating only horny rich bitches. They didn't need me to pay for the dates. They were like, I'll take you out. Bitches were paying for concerts and shit. Dude, I'm dude, I'm talking about some like some major concerts. Like, damn, you got tickets to see Khaled. I'm talking about some nice goddamn concert. It was like 30, 40,000. I got some tickets to take us to flying me all over the goddamn country. In Philippines and shit. Dude. Okay. Y'all keep on, even in the States, y'all keep on fucking broke bitches. In the States, I'm going to give you my secret. 
Rich pussy get lonely than them. You think broke bitches get lonely? No. Rich bitches that got degrees. Do you know how many scientists? And I mean, goddamn lab in the lab creating shit. Scientists, females, I didn't fuck in the states. Scientists pussy get lonely too. You know how many I done have four X investment pussy. You know how many bitches I done I done fucked and own like three goddamn a condo apartment buildings and shit and all type of investments. They get lonely too. You know how much AKA pink and green pussy I done fucked and I ain't pledged no fraternity ever. Not because of my charm, but because I know this. Like the song "Think You Lonely" now says. When your needs come out to feed, every woman has needs, especially when they was fucking like they was crazy in college. All they needs come out to feed. And they will talk that shit when, you, when they first meet you. You will never get this, but you'll never. Uh, three days later, they sucking the dog shit at your dick at six o'clock in the morning on their way to work. Nursing practitioners and shit. Female engineers, the few Female that decide to go to school for STEM, I'm fucking they ass. Dude. So if you think dudes like me that know women that got money and careers and jobs, they pussy get lonely and wet too. What did you think was gonna happen with me when I got to Columbia? You think I'm gonna start fucking bottom feeders? No, I'll leave that shit to y'all. Me, I'm looking for the same type of pussies as before until I start looking for a serious relationship like with Andre. But, but so it's not coincidental that I'm that I'm married an accountant. You get it? Get that? Not coincidental. I married a business manager. You get that? It wasn't a happenstance. Oh, his, his wife is a tax accountant. Shit ain't happenstance. Them the circles of, of women I was fucking. While I'm here in Columbia, you niggas be fucking broke bitches. I'm get the fuck out of here, man. I'm I'll get off the you getting off the plane in the top 10% of a country and you running the broke bitches. Man, y'all crazy. Y'all bet y'all bigger man than me. You're a bigger man than me. Cause ain't no way in hell. I'm sitting up there waste my goddamn time. I got five days and I'm dedicating five days to a bitch that got the potential to drug me. And I'm stuck in this goddamn country nine days because I spent four days in the hospital recuperating from that bitch drugging me get the fuck out of here i done lost my work laptop and everything else <laughs> he said definitely got yeah yeah man it's hard in the states it's hard in the states he said shout out to all of the cats paying uh 300 he said 33.43 percent alum damn oh that hurt my chest shout out to jamie in the building party bear in the building also <laughs> tobias my dude my dude he said your camera is more focused uh on your mic than you let's do let's let's move this over a little bit is that better that is better let's slide that out the way move in move in he said keep it going brother shout out shout out shout out thank you brother thank you very much for the shout out okay kevin also says uh travel there's a lot of world yes it's a lot of world and a lot of opportunity out there that's why i say just be patient man life is gonna that's the, that's the cool part life will come to you church on sunday ratchet on my man it's so my true story i'm just getting out i go to church i go to church with my aunt really nice church i'm like i can make this my home church really nice church just got back to detroit right my aunt tells me she said i'll never go to church with you again now when i'm in church i'm focused on the lord i got my bible out i got my pen out i'm ready to take notes talk to me pastor my aunt said i will never take you to church again and I look at my eye, I say, what did I do? What, what did I do? I know I focus on notes in the Lord. My aunt said, them females was breaking their damn neck to see who you were so bad that the pastor was looking around like, so y'all not going to listen. She said, if I noticed it, the other church mothers noticed it. I said, well, auntie, I said, I didn't notice it. I said, because I'm focused. 
I'm hearing what the pastor got to say. And I kid you not, I went back the next week without her. And that's when all the church sisters in there, not all, but many of the church sisters approached me and start making their bids. The Lord said, God told me. I didn't see none of this coming. So when I say it's in the church, yeah, it's in the church, man. All facts. Yep, no lies. Shout out to you, brothers. Shout out to Will Bid in the building. Appreciate you, brothers. <laughs> he said, he ain't lying. He ain't lying. Uh, turns of traditional women uh, witch hunt. Yeah. They will sit back and they'll crucify a woman that's traditional in the state so bad, especially if, if they know her. Why you why you making his plate? If they, then you're gonna pick it up and take it to the garbage, and you're gonna throw it. You gonna, so you're gonna take your plate of bones and, and, and leftover food, and you're gonna take his plate and you're gonna throw it, and you're gonna grab his, his glass and you're gonna carry it into the kitchen and clean it for him. He ain't no baby. You must got you a baby boy. And she's sitting up there in front of maybe 10, 15 women trying to explain to them in my country, this is how we were raised to take care of our man. Communication of love by serving our men because our men serve us. <coughs> and women in the United States can't relate to that at all. It goes over their fucking head. Even in the deep south, you can go to Alabama and women in Alabama don't treat men like they used to back in the day. Them days are over, over. Every blue moon, you'll see a woman that give her man a plate. Every blue moon and come back and pick it up after she give him a drink too. And ask him, does he want anything else to drink? Andrew just came in here a few minutes ago and offered me some fresh squeeze. Dude, it's 11 o'clock at night. Andre came in here at 10 o'clock and offered me some fresh squeezed orange juice. She bought a machine so she could just zzz, 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 zzz. she's so proud of that, that machine. Now I can make my husband fresh squeezed juice. How many of y'all got a woman that's a, that's of Miss Corporate America or Corporate South America or whatever corporate she is, but yet and still thinks about catering to you? I got one. Do you got one? She was so proud. She was like, taste, 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 taste the juice. Just taste the juice, babe. I said, well, that's good. She said, yeah, I just, I just made it. Fresh squeeze. The same Andrea that y'all see on YouTube, Miss Independent, still has enough sense to love her man. Shout out to Andrew. As a preacher, sir, I know you what you're talking <laughs> As the pastor's boy, as the pastor's baby boy, I understand. He said every chick I deal with has an um and I he said is a, a IUD. I didn't have a problem. Yeah, for real. Shout out to you dudes, man. I love you, brothers. Yeah, them church sisters, man. I'm I'm just saying, I'm putting it out there. The freak nasty at nasty. Na oh my god, they nasty. Sister, straight up, I mean, it was like a business meeting. She just took me to brunch, and she was like, well, I do this, I do that, I don't I do not do this. Yes, the beautiful bottom feeders. I leave them bitches alone, dude. I, and I see them all the time. I see them all the time, dude. And I be looking at dudes, I be like, man, don't deal with her. Get the one that just walked by. You got a chick that got time to go shopping with you all on a Wednesday and Tuesday afternoon? Bitch, what do you do? Well, you just got time like that. And I understand they got two-hour lunch breaks in Colombia, but shit. Yeah, get you one from Estrada 5, Estrada Zone 5, Zone 6 here in Colombia. If she... Even if you get a woman from Zone 4 that got her own shit, but you going from Zone... Th Some of y'all be dealing with Zone 2 or Zone 1 chicks. The brokest of the broke. Some of y'all, that's all y'all do. Yeah, I don't know. Could somebody explain to me why do dudes feel like it's a flex to go to the hood in other countries? I'm going to let you know something. Once I go to Brazil, I might not make it up into one of the prevellas. It's too much shit down here I want to see if I'm there for 10 days. 
I ain't no pr- living in the projects type dude. Once I left the hood, I never want to see another hood in America, in, in this state. And I'm not trying to see that shit in another country. Some of y'all be looking like it's a flex. Look at me. I'm in the hood among the poor and the starving. Zone one of my people. No, my people out here playing golf. Zone six motherfuckers. I'm bowling with zone five. I'm networking with zone four. I'm sorry. If if I was single and I got to ask a bitch where she live and she say I live in anything that's under zone four. That pussy would not be fucked by me. But she's sexy, Dre. This is Columbia. She can be replaced by zone six. There is no way in hell. Ain't no way in hell. Man, I ain't driving through no broken ass hood, potholes and all that shit in the name of a piece of pussy. I'm out there being paranoid and shit. I'm in a country where I ain't got my thing with me. And y'all just be th- walking through the mother. I'm in the hood of the missing blocks of Medellin. The undiscovered barrios of Bayo. I'm like, who the fuck you flexing on? You think you, it's a flex to show somebody's grandmama house that, that was built from scratch in a barrio? You you think it's a flex to be in the neighborhood playing dominoes with dudes and they ain't got no roads on the street? That's a flex? I don't get that shit, man. I bust my ass my whole life to get out the hood. Be damned if I fly to the other side of the world just to go to the hood. Shit, fuck that. I'm, I, hey, if I know, hey, I'm tell y'all something. That's why whenever we go somewhere, y'all always see us in nice ass spots. Why? I know that we are in the top 10 making Colombian senator money. I know if the Colombian senator is right there. Dude, we, Andrea be sitting up there just having sangria and Andrea be like, hey, that used to be the mayor right there. Oh, uh, that used to be the chief of police, right? Chief of police ain't in them broke-ass hoods where y'all go to to get pussy. The ex-mayor does a hangout in the motherfucking barrios and favelas where y'all be going to get bitches. We hanging out in spots where it's politicians and shit, and after we get done drinking our ass off, that'll be $25. And you can live top flight life in these countries and you ain't doing it you you got money out the ass you ex-military motherfuckers and you getting pensions and 100 benefits and you in the hood fucking bitches And as soon as y'all get drugged, y'all want to run your happy ass to Razor Ray and DC Rob and have them wipe your wounds. It's going to be all right, brother. It'll be, it'll be all right. As long as you survived it, you're good. DC Rob going to do a video for you. Shout out to Razor Ray. He going to do a video for your ass. Make you feel good. Because you know if you bring your ass over here, I'm going to talk about you. Because you, you, you are too good of a man to be dealing with some of the bitches that y'all deal with. That's what makes me so mad. Y'all too good of dudes, man. Y'all work your, you bust your ass to get to the point in life where you are and you dealing with broke bitches. Shit. You better be dealing with somebody that can show you how to invest in the goddamn Colombian stock exchange out here. You like, shit, I can't lock down the New York stock exchange, but I can lock down the motherfucking cryptocurrency in Colombia. I can lock it down. Let me find a bitch that can show me how to lock some shit down when it comes to the stock exchange in Colombia. Let me get a bitch that can show me how to do open up a business or some taxes or do taxes down here when I finally move down here. Let me get a bitch that that can show me around to some apartments so when I'm looking at some condos, she could tell me if I'm getting robbed or not. Y'all take bitches apartment hunting. Them broke bitches ain't never even seen this side of the city. I got a partner down here right now. He used to tell me, he said, Dre, you know one of the easiest ways I used to get pussy? He said, because these chicks would come down. He said, I've been dating for a little while. He said, on their side of town. He said, and I bring them over here. They finally come take a take an Uber over to my spot. He said, do you know how much pussy I done got because I got an air conditioner unit? 
zone threes, twos, and ones ain't got no air conditioning unit. He said, you know how much pussy out in the fuck because it's quiet over here? And it ain't got motherfuckers blaring music all day till four o'clock in the morning. He said, these bitches want to suck a dick in quiet and tranquility. You never had a bitch suck your dick in tranquility? This bitch just one, she focused. She ain't got to worry about no police cars going by. She ain't got to worry about no goddamn salsa music being blared. None of that shit. Nobody yelling in the street. She just, all she can hear is her, her, her mouth slurping on your dick. She happy than the motherfucker. She said, I ain't heard myself suck a nigga dick in a long time. She sucking your dick in tranquility and tranquila. Shangri-La. Just, just relaxed. He said, man, it was, it was amazing how many women I get. He said, I bring them over here. They don't want to go back home. Just because it's so quiet and peaceful and I got an AC. But y'all love dealing with broke bitches. And he finally stopped dealing with broke bitches. He told me, I'm done with this shit. Yep, beautiful bottom feeders. They love them. Love them. You can't tell them do shit about their beautiful bottom feeder. But when they come up to me and Andre talking about that double date shit, I'm going to tell y'all dudes now. If she is not a serious catch to where you be like, I can see Andre being happy for me. Don't bring that bitch around me. You my dog. You my dog. You can come around me anytime you want. Don't bring your bitch around me. If you know that she's zone three, zone two, zone one, you know that she ain't got shit. Don't bring her around me because she ain't used to shit. In the type of restaurants that me, you, and Andre going to go to, this your bitch ain't never been to. She knows she can't afford it. It's brand new. She doing selfies in that motherfucker. She's so happy. Mm -mm, no. Don't bring your bitch around me. No, don't do that. Prepare your mind for the culture shit <laughs> before you try. Yes. Yes. It's so simple. Let me get to the super chat. Shout out to Uno in the building. He said, I've traveled since 2019 in the building to Medellin and got married in 2021. Shout out to you, brother. He said, life has been great now. I'm looking for land out there to build my house now. We've been talking about that lately ourselves, man. Because we've been looking at different condos and things like that. But every time we go to the coffee region, we're like, man, it'd be nice to buy some land out here and build. Because it's so inexpensive out here. It really is. Thanks for the super chat, brother. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, brother. I've got uh, 30 more minutes. Yeah. <coughs> mm. I want to hear. Oh, mm. <laughs> I just know I've been fighting this cold lately, so she like I don't want to hear. It. I'm sick. He said, "Businesswoman, a doctor, a lawyer, and a woman uh, with gainful employment is someone uh, with everything to lose." Absolutely correct. Uh, she's what us brothers should be attaining. One hundred percent correct. It's not that hard. It's not that dude getting the number or the DMs or the Facebook or the just communication with a woman in Colombia, man, it's, I swear, you guys that have been here, you know, it is easy as breathing. It is easy as breathing. They do not play games. The only thing that you'll get with Colombia women is that they all flaky, but they flaky with each other. It's not you. If she flaked on a date, she flaked on a grandmama three days ago. Don't, don't take it personal. Colombia is just a man flake. Everybody flake on each other. This is part of the makeup of the culture. Don't take it personal. It we don't like it, but <laughs> Armenia area, yeah. Oh yeah, really nice area. Really nice. Yeah, build, yep. Build a nice finca. Easy breezy life. It's beautiful out there. Andrea's uh uncle, him and his wife. He's he's like uh, in his fifties. His wife is twenty three. She loved him too. She she nice too. She really nice, and uh, they live out in, in the thicker areas. Really nice farm, beautiful farms. Got the chickens and cows and all. You can't tell them nothing. Uh, South America, South America does have uh, my type of women, but it's too much ish going on out there. I'm gonna tell you something, B. Check it out. For the most part, in, in Colombia and South America, you're only hearing about. And I mean this. 
from all the YouTubers, all the news headlines and everything, you guys are hearing about what 10% of what goes on in Colombia. It's like 10%-ish. I kid y'all not. Shout out to the guys that send off cash apps. Thank you, Gail. Appreciate you. Love you. Yeah, only 10%. Most of Colombians, I kid you not, just regular, everyday, going to work, going back home people. They, they really, really are partying, listen to their music, chill, have their drinks, have their kids, family folk. That's most of Colombia. But the headlines that we get are the just like in the States, the dramatic stuff. They don't in the states. They don't put us regular Americans on the news. They gonna put some dude that went up in the, in a the Target and, and shot up a Target, or a dude that went up into Michigan State University acting a the fool. Them people went on the news, but the rest of the students there, they don't make it to a news headline because they were just some regular students in the United States that went to school and went back home. Same thing here in Colombia. All these doctors that are so beautiful, all these regular everyday people that dudes overlook it will amaze you how many of them actually they'll appreciate a dude like you they really will and the one of the reasons they appreciate you because they do get overlooked by so many dudes from other countries man y'all be overlooking some good women dude i'll be like man i don't get it on the news, if it bleeds, it leads. That's a good point. That's a good one. That's how it is down here. If it bleeds, it leads. And so all of a sudden, you think that Colombia is super dang. Your boy been here for six years. I ain't came this close. God, praise the Lord. I haven't came this close to any incidences. I don't put myself in neighborhoods. I'm not out there driving at 4 o'clock in the morning. A lot of times, even when you guys come down here, <coughs> we'll go to a club on one side of town then we'll come before it hits 12 we partying on our side of town so when i drop you guys off it might be three o'clock in the morning but we all within a five mile um, a five minute drive radius so it's these little things i don't ride with my windows down back windows down and i'm balling i'm, I'm blaring the music i don't i don't do all that stuff i don't go to neighborhoods i ain't got no business being in they can see bougie on my face. He bougie. He must got on something. So I don't do certain things, man. I'm not a, I'm not adventurous in the way that, that a lot of other guys are adventurous. I'm adventurous as far as like, you know, excursions and stuff like that. But adventurous like going into the hood, like look at what I can do. Man, fuck y'all. Uh-uh. Y'all, I'm not talking about y'all. I'm talking about them dudes that go in the hoods and thinking they flexing. Fuck that. He said, I came from Colombia and, and met a lady in Santa Rosa. Beautiful area, man. We love Santa Rosa. Waterfalls and everything. Uh, beautiful city and makes me want to move there with her. Yes, it is nice in that area. These are areas, Romelo, where most of the brothers don't never go to. This, this town he just mentioned is the small towns where Colombians vacation. There are over 14 waterfalls. It's got the hot water springs and shit down there. The restaurants will amaze you because they're made out of like the old houses have turned into the restaurants. I'm not talking about old house. I mean old mansion mansions. Where you're like, dang, you're doing a tour of a restaurant. You're like, God, dang, look at this restaurant got a bridge on the inside. That's how it is. I kid you not, man. Santa Rosa, Santa Marta, which is up north. Um with Buenaventura, um, which is the black, you know, black small town. Um, where else? Uh, well, we already said Manizales, which is a college town down here. Five universities in Manizales, uh, Pareda area, all these small towns. Y'all don't never go. I just be seeing white boys at the white boys at the white girls at the white girls at the white boys. Whenever we go, we go to these small towns. Every once in a while, I come across a brother from the states. Y'all go to y'all go exact opposite of where Colombians go. Literally, Colombians do not vacation in Cartagena. They would do that shit in once in a lifetime, unless it's like a wedding or or uh or like an anniversary. 
kid you not. Yeah, EBN says, he said, I mean, the only thing that uh that will become uh, a nuisance uh is the customer yeah customer service is slow we consider it bad because it's slow <laughs> no refunds no return hey ebn good call here in columbia no refunds no returns they will open your box like if you got a new like you like you bought something new something new electronic i was looking around to see if i could find something electronic like a new camera like if i bought a new camera they will open it up make sure the camera is working Put it back in the box. Make sure everything's good. Then they ring everything up. Columbia ain't no coming back. I, I need a refund for this camera. It ain't work. Every blue moon, they'll do that. But for the most part, you're right. Columbia don't do no refunds. Especially after they opened that box and checked it out for you. Shout out to Gail in regards to the private consultations. If you guys are interested, when you come into Columbia, I got some consultations lined up. Um... And I put them on a, on the blackboard uh, in regards to you guys. I got a couple of them lined up with a few of you guys uh, this up and coming week. But if you guys are interested in any information or consultation when it comes to relocating or your plans on relocating in a few years, or if you just want to visit uh, Colombia or South America, you just need some steps and you need somebody to be liaison for you in regards to your Airbnbs and hotels and things like that. That's a part of what we do with the consultations and you are added to our WhatsApp groups. Therefore, even after doing the consultation with me, you're in connection with me and 150 other brothers and sisters in the WhatsApp group. So you can keep asking questions and getting information the whole time you're part of, of, of our groups. So that comes along with the consultation as well. So shout out to you guys. Uh, he said, I, I, he said, you can't, he said, you can't openly use yourself. Yes. I had my cell phone the other day, man. I was like, Andre, you know better. Get in your truck and then use your cell phone. Don't, don't, don't use your cell phone and you're not in your truck or go in a building. Don't be using your cell phone out here. So yeah, that's true. And, and it's those little things. Shout out to Jay. Make sure you guys subscribe to my man Jay again. And uh, it's those little things about living in Colombia that you, I could say that makes Colombia uncomfortable is the petty crimes. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. A lot of people don't know that about Colombia when it comes to the girdles and the and little things like that. The corsets. I found out about that from my co-workers in the States. They told me to bring them some back. <coughs> tamales and Santa Rosa. Yes. Hot tamales. I got hooked on tamales down here. Because they make vegetarian tamales. At the, at the There's an Afro-Colombian vegetarian restaurant right around the corner from us. Me and Andrea live in there. Yeah, you can only get a store credit. <laughs> you ain't getting no cash back. <laughs> That's true, brother. Ain't no refunds in Colombia, man. He said, I'm 47. Shout out to you, Romello. He said, I'm 47, so I'm, I'm not uh, uh, hopping to club night. Santa Rosa is an ideal retirement. It, it really is. Uh, 30 minutes from the airport. One of my favorite airports in all the world is Santa Rosa Airport. Because as soon as you stepped out, it's on the Atlantic Ocean, man. I've never seen an airport that when you step out, the whole gorgeous, beautiful ocean is literally right there. I'm not talking about over there. I'm talking about right here. You like step out the airport and ain't nothing but the Atlantic Ocean. You like, whoa, that's a view. That is a view on a beautiful sunny day stepping out of, uh, stepping out of the airport. Kid you not, man. That is beautiful. He said, yeah, they do have an airport there. Yeah, they do. Perea is uh is where the airport is. Yes. Yes, it is. Let me scroll down a little bit. Oh, yeah, Jay. Shout out to Jay. Make sure you guys subscribe to this channel. 
He says, did the uh did the consult did the consult? Oh, Abraham, he said, I did the co oh, consult consultation. Uh did not get added to the WhatsApp groups. Abraham, do me a favor so I can make sure we do that, man. Shoot me a text message so I can get you into the both WhatsApp groups. Thank you for letting me know, brother. I'll do that. I'll do that for you as, literally as soon as we uh as soon as we get done. As soon as we get done, like I said, I'll be done in like 20 minutes. I'll, I'll get you in those WhatsApp groups. Thank you for giving me the heads up, man. Man, I thought I got you in there. And also, for some of you guys, speaking of what Abraham meant, if, if some of you guys that at any point in time you're in the WhatsApp group and you get a new phone with a new phone number, hit me up and I get you back in the group. That's happened several times over the last few years where guys were like, hey, Dre, I got a new phone. I got a new phone. Number. Could you get me back in the groups? And I get you back into the WhatsApp group. So it's no problem. So definitely hit me up, brother, so I can go ahead and get you into, get you into the groups. Also, want to give a shout out to my brother, Mitchell, who sent a $5 cash app. I appreciate that, brother. I really do in, in such a way, man. You guys are great. I love you. Yeah, that ocean view from the airport, man. It's crazy. That is crazy. Let's finish off this, this, this video that we were watching earlier showing the life of the male hyenas. See, on YouTube, we constantly hearing about women being hyenas, but we never understand it. So I, I saw Chanel uh, Simone Make you guys uh, subscribe to her channel. Hey, Gail, if you could put Chanel's, just like you put Jay's in there, could you do me a favor, put Chanel's uh, channel in there for guys to subscribe. Jamaican sister, really good. She was using this video earlier, and I let her know I was going to be using this video. And I got it from Gail. Shout out to Gail. It, it shows the hierarchy of hyenas, where the female and her cubs are the highest, and the males are at the bottom. And male hyenas are kicked out of the clan once they start to grow from being cubs. And they have to find another clan. And they are abused by the new clan until the new clan decides to accept them. But, but males never raise in the hyena uh, clans. They never raise in a lifetime above any female ever. If you're born a male hyena, and it's just like in the United States today. If you're born a male, the way that it's set up, you would never raise above with some of these opportunities, the way that the system is set up in the United States. So let's take a quick look and finish off this video. I want to pull it back some. <coughs> and once a male does gain acceptance, he becomes the very lowest ranking hyena in the epic or bone cracking order. The tastiest food rarely makes its way down to him, and there's no way to move up the social hierarchy besides simply waiting, either for new males to join the clan below him or for males ahead of him to die. No adult male will ever attack a single female, resulting in the female dominated hierarchy. This is so weird. Unlike most mammals, male hyenas are subordinate to females, which is probably because, unlike most mammals, female hyenas are bigger and, and meaner than males, which is probably thanks to their need to stand up for their offspring in this kind of crazy feeding frenzy. And, unlike pretty much all mammals, physically fit or, or socially capable individuals can't make their way to the top of hyena society to do most of the decision and baby making. They're the only social mammals we know of with such a rigid hierarchy. And we don't yet know why. We do know the outcome, though. The male hyenas like Scarface end up plagued with injuries from harassment and hazing, and are prematurely worn down teeth for eating too many bones. And on average, only live half as long as females do. The best they can hope for is that at the end of the day, they'll have left behind a few cubs, which is not, not the best for the ones that turn out to be males. Yeah. That's why you see hyenas. That's why you hear guys or YouTubers compare the modern woman to hyena. They do not ever want you to raise in hierarchy in the family unit. 
they will never submit to you they will not change it doesn't benefit them economically socially until they hit the wall and they're ready to have a child then they want your semen just like with the hyenas and then this is the other part where she said we've done the research we don't know why it's their system is set up like that it's the only male species i mean the only uh, uh mammal species that does this that by nature the women rule and they don't know the reason why in many households in the united states it's becoming more and more like that natural it's it's what it is what it is the freedom of how it is going to be in the future women are going to rule the household they're going to rule corporate america think about it statistically the average female makes between especially black women makes between 61 to 71 cents per dollar compared to white men for the same job whatever you're doing as a black woman and if it's a white dude doing it you're only getting 61 cents on a dollar 61 to 67 cents on a dollar to do the exact same job so at the end of the day she could care less about her money when she could find ways to spend your money she know her money ain't gonna be enough to sustain for a lifetime so once she hits that economic wall guess who she gonna turn to the simps so you might as well use your passport fellas you might as well take advantage of your passport shout out to teddy in the building thank you very much for the super chat brother for the culture i appreciate your work you guys will always be the hyenas at the at the bottom eating the bones you're only good for reproduction you notice that in the united states they've been talking lately talking lately about the fact that there's not enough black male sperm cell at the sperm banks for these ladies to use on their frozen eggs so now these ladies are becoming pen pals to guys that are in prison they would rather have the sperm of a prisoner than to not have a child at all a lot of these ladies are getting their passports so they can get smashed and impreg impregnated in another country than to not have a child at all forget about that child needing his daddy his biological father like women in the united states always say in the just like in the hyena clan i'm the mama i'm the daddy celebrate father's day and mother's day with me that's the united states that's uk that's canada it ain't gonna get greater brother it ain't gonna get greater later y'all can forget about that one and some of y'all just holding out with hope you fasting and praying fasting and praying and it ain't work has it nope it's getting worse every year isn't it yep you go out on a date tomorrow tomorrow night or th this weekend it's going to be worse yep it is not getting any better anytime too soon shout out to charles charles says in the hyena society the males are <coughs> excuse me graped by the great by the by the females they basically keep around kept around for reproductions otherwise they don't really serve a purpose in the society isn't that how these women are talking to y'all they could talk reckless to y'all just like hyenas females are reckless with the male hyenas reckless don't care they treat you like you're replaceable they treat you like you don't have any teeth in the game just like the just like they said that the male hyenas bones and his teeth decay faster because he doesn't tear at meat he's breaking bones his whole life because that's all they leave him to eat is bones the female hyena lives longer than twice as long than the male hyena sounds like men in the United States doesn't it every form of system is set up to where the the, the woman prospers and the man ain't got nothing 
your body can be found days later. They go care nothing about you. Throw them, throw them in the freezer, in the meat locker. But you're going to stay in that country for the money. Like I said, I'm, like I always say, I'm not talking to you guys that are dads or some of you ladies that are moms and you've got responsibilities. I'm not talking to you that are taking care of loved ones like your mom or grandma. You might be still taking care of or you may be taking care of your dad or granddad. I'm not talking about you guys that got responsibilities. But if you were like me. And the only reason you're still in the United States because you got some fucking friends, you gonna get some new friends in another country. If the only reason you still in the United States is because of fucking money, dude, if you making that much good of money in the United States, you need to start putting together an eight year game plan, a five year game plan to where you can still make that type of money while you're outside the United States. And then you have to under understand also the boomerang theory. Some of y'all don't want to be boomerangs. I mean, slingshot, my fault. The slingshot theory. What do I mean by that? Some of us bust our ass to get to 80,000, 120,000. And let's be honest, you be damned if you go back to 35,000. <clears> but here's the kicker I went back to 35,000, pulled my slingshot back. Now, I was at 81. Came down here with 20. First year made 35. I steadily pulled it back. That year three, six figures. Now, mind you, from the time I was outside of incarceration until I officially moved to South America. I had not hit six figures. Like I said, 81 was my tops. So let's say that was from 99. Let's say, let's just, let's just round it on up. Not from, 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 uh, uh, from 2000 to 2020, even though we just give or take a year, right? 20 years, 20 years being a college recruiter, 20 years of working for, for corporate America, 20 years. And the, uh, the apex was 81,000 a year. Not bad. But then in less than three years, being in South America, because I boomeranged, I mean, I slingshot, I, I, I was willing to trust myself to pull it back and pull it back and pull it back. And sprung forward in less than three years, six figures. And ain't looking back. You don't trust yourself. You think some dudes are lucky and they're just blessed. No, dude. I, I realized that, listen, if my 35 would still keep me in the top, top group, in other words, zone five, zone six here in Colombia, at 35,000, I'm making good money. In the States, 35,000 ain't shit. Here in Colombia, you making 35,000 online, you can do some things. So they gave me a chance to build a business over here online. And then I built another one over there online. And then I did the social media online. So now I've got three or four businesses going online. So I'm good. So if this one only makes last year, it made 15,000. This year, it only makes 10. Well, this one's making 47 this year. Okay, cool. Now I have businesses that offset itself. Whereas in the States, I had one fucking paycheck. And if it didn't go good, I had to work extra overtime. And if I didn't do the overtime, I wasn't going to get the good time check. That's what my point is. You got to trust yourself with this, fellas. I don't care if you say, you know what? It's going to take me a few years to get to that point, Dre. Cool. It took me a few years. But don't make the mistake of thinking that there's no opportunities out here with for you. Let me hit this super chat real quick. He said, went out last night, $75, plan before 55, parking ticket, $175, $300 date night. Damn. <coughs> 
$300 day night. Mike, Mike, Mike. Thank you for the super chat, Mike. See what I'm saying, guys? It's little things that eat up your income. Even if you got the money, it's little things that's dating in the United States. The way you like, damn. And women got the audacity. Shout out to the ladies. They got the audacity to say, well, we pay too. Somebody's got to pay for this makeup. I had to get my hair did. I had to get my... Wait, what? Do not try to make us think that every time you go out on a date with somebody, you going out to get your hair did for $150, $200. Don't think we... Don't have us think that every time y'all get ready to go on a new date that y'all going to the mac counter in nordstrom's and shit and buying new mac makeup don't try to act like well i had to buy out you ain't bought no new goddamn outfit for a date for a dude that you just met who the hell you think you talking to hey guys how many of y'all went out on dates on first date with some, she looked good, but she ain't look like she bought a brand new outfit. She just had, I like the dress she got on or the skirt or the blouse, but it doesn't look like she just went and bought that motherfucker like a couple hours ago for the first date. Because women ain't going to spend that type of money for a dude that they don't know if they're going to like or not. Get the hell up out of here. Well, we had to spend money on this. When the last time you spent that type of money? Well, I had to spend 50 You spent $50 getting your nails done for a first date for a dude that you ain't never went out with before. Is that what y'all trying to tell us? That every time y'all went on the first date, whether it was me and some of y'all been on first dates like three times a week or at least three times a month. So every time you go out on a date, you get a new weave. You trying to tell us that. You see, once again, it's the lie. They lying. And they, they, they say it so much, they think that we supposed to believe it because they believe it. Because they lie to each other. Women ain't going to get no brand new weave every time they go out on a date. They are not going to get a no, no brand new nails done. Brand, they might, might get a new outfit. But they damn sure ain't buying no brand new shoes to go with that outfit. And it sure ain't going to be a brand new purse with a new outfit and the new shoes for the first date. Get the fuck out of here. Now, if it's a special date and a special event, I can see that. But just a regular date, shit, half of y'all be wanting to come in your pajamas and a, and a goddamn bonnet on your head. If it was up to y'all for real, for real, because you have bonnet behavior on the date. You be sitting up there on the date with her. She looking at her cell phone, waiting for the new Tyler Perry show to come out. I got to leave at 8.30. Tyler Perry show is be coming on about 8, 8.45. Let me. I need Tyler to lie to me some more. So, guys, my point in saying all this, yeah, $300. <laughs> Three hundred dollars for a date night. He said, "I make two hundred twenty-four k, but I have he said, I have a fleet of trucks." And there we go. The man has built something. There we go, man. Y'all keep doing y'all things, man. I love y'all. He says for low quality women, uh, on, and yeah, they do all that shit for the low quality. He said, "Man, this man is up there and had to kick out the ticket for this bitch." And I didn't even ask him if he got some pussy. And was the pussy worth three hundred dollars? <laughs> you know how much pussy you can get in Colombia for? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Going plenty of POF man. Listen, boy, I was a POF bandit. POF bandit. Do you hear me? I'm on a black cowboy hat. I'm wearing a black cowboy hat and POF bandit. You will see what the real dating market looks like. Like I said, there may be. I used to say this about plenty of fish. There's plenty of fish, but the work, but the water is murky. <laughs> There's plenty of fish, but the water on that app is murky. Murky did a month. <laughs> you don't know what's in that water. Plenty of fish. Shit, there may be some gators in that motherfucker. You don't know what type of fish you gonna have. Goddamn. Jack Dempsey's and fucking Oscars and, and, and uh, uh, 
piranha up in that motherfucker. There's plenty of piranha on that damn app. That's what's on there. He said Mexican dinner 50. Plan B, seven dollars. So he had the plan B, so he did get the pussy. So he, he said seven dollars for the plan B. It's the little things, man. The little fucking things. He said, I just spent a hundred dollars in Medellin uh uh nightclub, smash the supermodel. And again, I say amen. Doing this thing. He, this brother spent a hundred dollars in another country smashing the supermodel. This other brother spent three hundred dollars in the states, including a parking ticket. It ain't fair in the states. I'm telling you, you say I'll be making sixty k living in Colombia. Man, listen, I tell people all the time, I I would take fifty k living in Colombia than two hundred thousand with all them damn taxes. So you gonna keep you ain't gonna keep the whole two hundred and living in the states. And that stressful motherfucker. Give me fifty thousand online, and I could travel the world. I could be, I could be in Bali, right next to the motherfucking white boy and white girl in Bali and shit, with my laptop, with my fifty thousand, and doing my shit while you stressful dealing with that goddamn traffic and that cold ass weather in the states, with your two hundred thousand ass, knowing that that two hundred thousand gonna be eating up at taxes and bitches. Hell no. I am quick. So let, let me know if I'm freezing, guys. Uh, hey, Charles, I just looked at your message, too. My bad. He says, like, putting lipstick on, on a trash can. <laughs> it's still a trash can. He said, they think men are supposed to appreciate that. I did this. I got my nails done and my feet. Let me see your feet. Huh? Huh? My ass. Let me see your feet. He ain't getting nothing. Squirrel stop them lies. Is man false for allowing this mess along with the government? Say it again, KB. B. It's our fault. I don't blame ladies, man. Listen. Women in South America see suckers just like women in North America see suckers. And we let shit slide in the name of fucking. Man, please. We let so much bullshit slide that, that it's part of the culture now of just letting shit slide. He said, ew, that's your hair or is it weave? Hair, weave, hair, weave. <laughs> For real. You don't know which one it is. She got on. I do, is that her? Is that her real hair or is that a hair helmet? And me, I don't do hair helmets. I'm gonna tell you that now. I do not lie. Cannot stand hair helmets. No offense to any guys that like a woman with hair helmets that wear hair helmets. All that shit. We wasn't around during the time of the Egyptian empires, and women knew how to braid their own hair or put it away or wear a hair wrap like Gail does and. And things like that. There's a difference between a, a hair, a beautiful hair wrap, and a bonnet. A hair wrap, I could feel like I'm giving me some African pussy. A bonnet, you know, I'm a goddamn porn on porn hood with motherfucking black women in bonnets. If you just put on porn in porn hood, bonnets and orgasm, booties and bonnets, a number of sisters gonna pop up in porn hood with bad cameras and shit and bad camera angles and fucking bonnets and every everywhere. Please. I don't deal with none of that. When I was single, damn, no, no way in hell. No way in hell. Support your sisters. What? I support the sisters, but I don't support them damn bonnets and them hair helmets. Shit. Thank you very much in regards to the consultation, Gail, information. Yeah, man. That catfish, the bottom. Yeah, on the bottom. Yeah, catfish all on the bottom. That water murky in the motherfucker. Oh, POF, man. <laughs> I had one chick, man. Dude, I was so mad. I went to go uh 
went to go pick her up for a date. She got me, man. She catfished me. She had pictures on there from 10 years ago. I she opened up the door. I'm looking all over her shoulder and shit. Is your granddaughter home? Is your is your granddaughter home? Because I know this can't be the chick that I'm supposed to be going on a date with. I'm all over her shoulder. Like, is Kimberly here? I'm Kimberly. You Kimberly Sr. <laughs> shit. I'm like, man, this chick that got me, man. And I'm not about to take out the dinner. I was like, can I get a glass of water? And so I got a glass of water. I purposely did this. Got a glass of water, sat down on the couch, talking to her for a minute, and did the old, you know what? I got some things I need to do. Gave her back her glass, and I walked right up out that house. Plenty of fish uh, were uh, affected by the chemical glass <laughs> that spilled over <coughs> into the ocean. Girl, you crazy. <laughs> I ain't mad at you. Uh, she would have been in 11 states. Let's see. Okay. Kings of Dreams, salute. Salute to my brother. He said, give them that red pill talk. Yeah, man. It's, it is our fault. We still back spaces and places out there. My boy in the building. That big mama bullshit. Yeah, man. For real. That's another thing. Dude, I... <laughs> I don't know. I do not miss bonnet pussy. I don't, man. I, I don't know why I'm whispering, but I don't miss bonnet pussy, dog. Bonnet pussy, you always got to convince yourself that she looking sexy. You, you always got to be like, <sighs> you got to have a level of horniness that ain't the regular level of horn. You can't look at her like all romantic and shit. Even when it's in the late night hour, like if you want to do, like you want to do some pussy piracy and you want to just steal the pussy at night, and she just wake up with a big dick and a pussy on her mouth, and you be looking like you. And it don't matter how nice the bonnet, you know, color is or pattern. It's just some about a, a female sucking your dick with a bonnet on. It's. Is it me or you? No, it's the bonnet. I do not miss bonnet sex, man. Oh my god, I hated bonnet sex. I hated it. I hated that shit. I hated it. I'm so I'm so glad I ain't got to deal with that shit no more. My I look over at Andrea. She be sleep. Goddamn hair just be flowing. Just flowing to the other side of the bed. I'd be like, that's what I'm talking about right there. That's what I'm talking about. But them goddamn bonnets. I do not miss that shit. Oh, I'm sorry, Gail. I'm sorry. Let your girlfriends know. It's a lot of dudes out here that think like me. That damn bonnet sex. You got to convince. You got to hype yourself up for that shit. It's almost like you got to take deep, deep breaths and shit before you... <sighs> Deep breathing exercise before you fuck bonnet pussy. Because you be like, ain't nothing sexy about this moment. Nothing about this says sexy, romantic. You don't be feeling like putting on no Luther, no silk. There's a meeting in my bedroom. You don't feel like none of that shit. With bonnet pussy, you just be like, let me just get it off. Let me just go ahead and bust a nut and go back to sleep. We all... Oh, Bruh, do we not hate that shit? Women do not know the degree, the level of disdain we have for Bonnet. See, if you got yours wrapped up like Erica Badu, looking like an African queen or something, or like a gal and some of, them, some of them ladies, I'm sleeping with the African queen. I know women got to wrap their hair up. I got you. But them shower caps and them motherfucking bonnets. And it ain't... Is it just me? The bonnet can have the word sex printed all over it, and it still don't look sexy. It can have fucking hearts on it. It can have goddamn four-leaf clovers on it. You don't feel lucky to be getting that fucking pussy. Bonnet I hated that. I hated it. This is the first time I got a chance to get this out. So let me get it out, brother. I ain't never said it, brothers. I hate bonnet sex. I hate that shit. Oh, my God, I hated that shit. 
bonnet sex was like throwing up in the back of my throat when you just had acid throw up acid come to the back of your motherfucking throat that's how i felt about bonnet sex i hated that shit i used to want to just let your head be fucked up let it be you fucked up for about 30 minutes till i get this pussy you can put the body back on so did you say the oh oh and then oh with bonnet sex when, when she go to bed, the body is one way, and then about an hour later, it's a totally different look. It's looking like a raspberry beret and shit. Looking like she in a goddamn Russian military type of shit. It's all on the side. Half the hair is showing, and the rest of it ain't showing because the, the hair is popping out from upside the, under the bonnet. And you supposed to be thinking that she the sexiest shit. Oh, my God, I hated bonnet pussy. And it was never, it was never on the level. I'm going to tell you, is it just me? <laughs> I hated bonnet pussy so much. I was fucking females with short haircuts just so I didn't have to deal with a bonnet bitch. I ain't going to even lie. Give me a baby afro. Give me the chick with the, she, she's got the sexy face with the deep dish dimples and the, the nice, beautiful feminine face but she got a, a merch she got her, she got her shit down she got brush waves give me one of them motherfuckers give me how amber rose was in the early 2000s before i deal with a, a bonnet them oh my god i hate the motherfuckers the bonnet be twisted all up in here it's all down by the eye they roll over try to look sexy and you see a bonnet just covering up the eye like a patch I hate that shit, man. And all you dudes are still fucking bonnets. Man, Mo power to you. I don't miss that shit. For all the bonnet pussy that I would have got if I wasn't married, I cast it on you. I cast all the bonnet pussy that I would have ever got. Y'all can have it. Oh, my God, I hated that shit. Half of the reason why y'all be seeing us fucking white girls is because we at least know it is not. I don't give a fuck about the white girl got extensions. I know it ain't going to be a bonnet in the room. It won't be a bonnet in a four block radius of her apartment. I won't have to worry about that shit. One of the reasons I used to mess with mixed girls, because mixed girls ain't going to be no bonnet within a 30 mile radius of her apartment. So I ain't have to worry. Shout out to Teddy. Shout out to Kings and Dreams, by the way. For the super chat, oh my god, man! You see, I'm laughing my ass off at work. I can't stand that shit, man. I can't stand bonnets. And then they got like a collection of bonnets or shower caps, as if one looks sexier than the other, as if they doing you a favor. This the same one that was looking sexy than the motherfucker last weekend on a vacation with you in lingerie, and she had her hair flowing, and you looking all good. She looking all good. Days later. She got that fucking bonnet on her goddamn head. I can't. Oh my god! And bonnet has no favoritism. Bonnet has no class. You can't sit back and say, "Well, it's only broke women that wear bonnets." No, goddamn AKA chicks, goddamn chicks that are pharmacists and goddamn school principals city council members and shit sisters that sit up there they college professors and deans and shit all they ass got a bonnet i bet you michelle obama ass got a bonnet I, I, god damn it i'll be if it was me if i was president of the united states for one day i'd be a bonnet banded motherfucker bonnets of the united states were banded today by president spence president spence has declared today that bonnets are no longer allowed to be sold purchased or worn in the united states area and its subsidiary locations such as guam the philippines and puerto rico we're going to get an interview with president spence in regards to why he banned it bonnets in the united states that will be my first damn feeding the hungry the poor the goddamn potholes in the streets motherfucking taxation social security no my first goddamn declaration as a president i'm putting i'm talking to congress i'm like hey listen senate house y'all need to come together and i will pay i will not veto this this bonnet ban bill it will call the bbb the bonnet banding bill and i will ban all motherfucking bonnets in the united states forever 
if you if you gonna hey you gonna have to do your hair a different way baby because i'm bonding bad i'm banned in bonnets i swear y'all gonna be y'all be wearing hair wraps like y'all african queens from now on ain't no way in hell ain't no way in hell that's i can't stand dude i have very few things that i can't fuck with okra sorry for all you people that i love my fried okra i tried couldn't do it it kept reminding me of the slimy okra my intelligence being insulted that's my pet peeve do not insult my intelligence i hate when women look me straight in my eyes and be telling a bare face lie and i know that they lie don't insult my intelligence and number three which is number one them motherfucking bonnets I swear, if you ever had met a dude that had a disdain, disdain for fucking, if I see a bonnet chick coming this way, I'm going that motherfucking way. I tried that shit. I tried to be supportive of the sisterhood. Yeah, I see I'm still babbling about it. I try to be supportive of the sisterhood, down for the sisters. I understand different textures of hair. I understand, you you know, you got to take care of your, your hairstyle. You ain't trying to sleep on your neck all night. I got you. I got you. But you ain't doing that shit at my expense. Dudes like me like to fuck in the late night hours. And I am not trying to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning with a hard dick and it's a bonnet right next to me. That is not about to happen. That's like putting your dick on punishment. That's like looking at your woman got a condom on her fucking head. Like, why the fuck am I? How am I supposed to look at her as sexy and she got a condom on her fucking head? This is not fair, Lord. This is There's nothing attractive about this shit. He said, Andre, you're... <laughs> <laughs> with us vaccination of the hair uh, protection device yes man them damn hair helmets the damn hair helmet weaves and the fucking bonnets man used to work my my nerves man i kid you not man i'm not i'm not trying to torture you brother but i'm just saying oh my god yes yes Rather, but I'd rather they just go out there and, and just in the name of Prince by a raspberry beret. I don't care if they get an ex military beret, I don't care if they get an ROTC high school beret, I don't care. But the bonnets, your girl. Was putting some conditioner in her hair about a month ago. She walked out the shower area with a shower cap on. She saw my face. She already knew. Lucy, you got some explaining to do. I probably in the in the all the years we've been married, I probably seen Andrea with the shower cap twice. By the shower, not even in the shower. Most of the time, she doesn't know twice, but in bed, that shit will never. And some of y'all dudes gonna be y'all, some of y'all dudes, your dick gonna get soft tonight because you're gonna be laughing when you go to bed tonight next to your woman, and she's gonna be looking at you like, What you laughing at? Nothing, baby. I want some sex. No, baby. I, I, I don't feel like tonight. I got a headache. Some of you dudes tonight going to be telling your woman you got a headache because you're going to be looking at her bonnet like that nigga Dre fucked my night up. He said, wearing bonnets everywhere. Grocery stores, Walmarts. And they be thinking they be cute. And you be looking like, see, this these these zone, these strata one, zone one <laughs> bonnet wear <babies. coughs> I kid you not, I couldn't stand the motherfuckers. He said, I ain't smashing a bonnet in years. Yeah, man, them bonnets. He said, no, nah, sometimes he had to grab a handful of uh, of this fro and drive him crazy. Yeah, give me the fro. Give me the regular hair. Give me whatever it is, whatever woman got to do to keep the bonnet at bay, do that. But that, you ain't going to see Holly Berry in no goddamn bonnet. With a short haircut, I used to get some look for some Holly Berry, uh, uh goddamn, uh, who else? Tony Braxton haircut, motherfuckers, just so I don't have to see the bonnet. Ooh, and some of y'all, the bonnet don't imp imp affect you. Y'all be like, shit, long as she can suck good dick, I don't care about no bonnet. Go ahead, girl, 
I, I watch that mo- that purple motherfucker go up and down. Watch that purple bonnet head go up. Uh, dude, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm I'm 50 plus years old. My sex life is bougie. I don't just fuck everything. Even if I was single, I passed the just fuck everything phase. My I'm I, I you know how like you when you make it certain AJ, hey, you know how when you get to a certain economic stature, you can go to some of the better restaurants and you ain't got to go to grandma catfish spot around the corner, even though grandma catfish spot is cool to go to every once in a while now. You can go to you a real three, four star, five star restaurant because your economy is better. That's how my sex life is. If I was single, I ain't. That's why regular pussy. I'm mm-mm, no, 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 no. I'm over fifty. I fuck specialized pussy now. I got I fuck pussy that be like how many now how many goddamn nationalities you got four. You black, Irish, Spanish, and a little Japanese. No, you come on, let's go fuck. But just regular every day? No, 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 not, no, no. And bonnets? Come on, David. Good point, Dre. Ain't seen a white woman with a jiffy popcorn bag yet. Yeah. And if she doing it, I, I ain't seen. I ain't gonna pretend. I ain't gonna put that on Becky. I ain't gonna even put that on Becky. Barry says, "Girl at night, natural." I love girls Afro. Love it. Gail got the afro. You can run your fingers through. Shout out to Gail. I ain't mad at her or man, whoever she dating. Shout out to Gail. Love the natural look. It must be treated with care and respect. Yes, it does. Absolutely correct. Love, love it, love. My mom, my, my mom, <coughs> her whole life was froze. She, she had just started wearing like a little bit of perms like maybe in the last 10 years of her life, but she was always like long froze or short froze. She was always a fro woman. I think that's another reason why I, w- I never was into them bonnets. <laughs> Shout out to Kings of Dreams once again for the super chat. <laughs> hey, y'all only laughing because you know it's true. President Dre signing off on the executive order surrounded by bonnet wham bitch. Yes. Yes, I swear, man. It'd be arrests. It'd be it'd be bonfires. You know how back in the day when they used to burn books, man, they'd be bonnet burning bonfires across the country, all over the news, man. It'd be it'd be females trying to break into stores to buy bonnets. It'd be underground bonnets sold. Like, they'd be like, listen, I got them bonnets. That's the only way bonnets would be sold underground. I kid you not, man. Any man that find his woman wearing bonnets, he could turn her in for a reward type shit. For real, they be turning in bonnets like they turn in guns. Like if you turn your bonnet to get your bonnet in, we'll give you a five dollar coupon to Walmart. I kid you not, man. God dang, goddamn Asian shops will be going out of business because they can't sell enough bonnets anymore. I swear, man, I can't stand them motherfuckers, man. I can't stand to just look at them with my human eyes. When I'm in Walmart and I see bonnets, I just want to close my eyes and walk away like this. I can't stand them. Up. If women really realize how much we hate the test bonnets, can't stand them ugly motherfuckers. I know I can't. Maybe some of y'all can tolerate. Maybe y'all got a high bonnet, bonnet tolerance. You know how some dudes got the high liquor tolerance? I could drink all night. Some dudes got high liquor tolerance. Some of you dudes got high bonnet tolerance. You can fuck 15 bitches with 15 bonnets in 15 days. I, mm, hell no. Ugh. He said, boy, okra. It's like, yeah, I know, right? I can't do the okra. I'm sorry. Some of you guys can. Y'all can cook with the best of them. Sometimes he uh he needs to grab a handful of fro and drive him crazy. Yeah, Gail, Gail mentioned that earlier. For real. Seriously, ah, he said, like my mama, uh, like mama from Boomerang, uh, you did marry me for my for my bond. <laughs> yeah, right. See what I'm saying? Old school Tony Braxton's with the bonnet. See, oh yeah, man, I can't, ah, I can't do it. A bonnet, man, I just can't do it. This is the first time I've ever made a confession like that. I might do it again someday, but dude, I can't. Oh my god, I can't do it. I can't. Dog, I'm I'm gonna just go to bed and go to sleep and hope I don't make the mistake of dream of bonnets, man. I can't stand the motherfuckers. 
can't stand him. And like I say, every walk of life, you can't blame bonnets on Aisha because Laquanda in Atlanta, who's living in uh, Stockridge or living in uh, Buckhead, her ass wearing bonnets too. You got chicks wearing bonnets in New York. You got chicks in the Midwest with bonnets, all in L.A. with bonnets. Oh, no. Hell no. Hell no. All right. You guys, don't forget your, your check me. If you come to Columbia within 72 hours of when you're going or when you are leaving back to the States, you got to fill out your check mag form. Don't forget about that. I know sometimes they ask for it and sometimes they don't, but you want to have it filled out just in case they do. The CD man uh, be posted up at the hair salon <laughs> selling bonnets. Yeah, he's selling CDs and bonnets. And females be buying them in droves. That's right, Gail. Barry, shout out to Barry. He said, Monique uh, nearly triggered off World War III by telling his sister, I remember that, a couple years ago, to drop that bonnet. Uh, there was such an uproar and the potential uprising to indicate, uh, to, to indict her uh before before a grand jury not just a jury a grand jury for going against the sisterhood man listen he said i'm ready to stand up comedy special about bonnets man i could do a 45 minute set it won't be a it won't be a, a sister in that motherfucker by the time i get done It'd be number white men, women, and happy black men laughing our asses off. An Asian dude snickering. I'm telling you, man, I can't stand them motherfuckers. Cannot stand them. Oh, my God. And I'm trying to find, have I ever been with somebody with a bonnet that I gave a fuck? Of, did I, was I, dude, dude. I'm trying to think of that I've even had sex more than three times with a female with a bonnet. And I can't think of any female that I was with that I fucked more than three times that had a bonnet. I couldn't do it. I couldn't stomach it. I was like, I can't do this. You're nice during the day, but at night you put the bonnet on. It's over. We only fucked three times. <sighs> it's the first night. <laughs> it's over tomorrow. I can't do it. But let me let you guys go. I'm up out of here. I don't want to keep on talking shit. But some of you dudes about to go fuck somebody right now with a bonnet. Shout out to you. You bonnet fucking motherfuckers. You know you are. Come. We got 71 people in here. Most of you guys are male. <coughs> of course. I mean, most people here are male. Y'all can't tell me out of the people that's going to the 71 that's going to be fucking tonight. Some of y'all about to roll over to a bonnet, right, motherfucker? Some of y'all watching this live stream giggling at your wife right now, your girlfriend right now. You glancing right now like, God damn, he ain't, he ain't lying. I don't even want to fuck her tonight. And she looking horny to the mother. You ever had a female that got a bonnet on and she looking horny? Like she like, I'm about to get this. I don't, I don't know. You, you be looking at her no matter how. No matter how hot she is in the daytime, you looking at her ass like she respucia at night because of that damn bonnet. I'm for real. For thank you. That's where you pull out the blindfolds. And I that's I kid you not. That's the bonnet was the one that made me start going international. I kid you not. I was like, man, I'm a, I'm be fucking mixed chicks, Spanish chicks, sisters with short haircuts. I don't care. I had one chick. She was fine. She was a jazz singer. And um, she she had her hair bald, but she was like Grace Jones. She could pull that off like, like it wasn't shit, right? Chocolate sister. Any female I could deal with, I didn't have to worry about a bonnet. That's who was getting the dick. I, ca I can't stand them, man. I, cannot, I can't stomach them. I can't stand them. The only thing a bonnet is good for me, I'm going to throw up in that motherfucker. I'm going to take it off her head and throw up in her fucking bonnet. That's, I can't stand a bonnet. I can't stand that shit. And I mean that. And if sister's listening, I will, I would, I'm going to break this part into its own video by itself. Talk about men can't stand bonnets. We can't stand that shit. This little segment we just finna talk about the last 20 minutes, you'll be seeing this part again in the next couple of days. 
because I'm going to break that shit down. I have all type of bonnet video footages for y'all in the background. Okay, everyone have a great, productive week. I feel you. I have to uh, to deal with bonnet. Yeah, man. Uh, man, y'all have fun with that shit. He said, cover my eyes. Clap her three times and get, <laughs> and get her. I ain't mad at y'all. <laughs> Shout out to Xavier in the building. He said, bro, believe it or not, uh, you have dudes out here rock dudes out here rocking bonnets. Hell, he said, I seen Snoop Dogg rocking a bonnet. I gotta go, man. I gotta go. Y'all ain't gonna take. Y'all ain't gonna have me here all night. Andrea, wait for for a man right now. Oh man. Once again, any private consultation you guys can reach out to me, but I'm not a bonnet man. I guess I'll fail. Once again, this is Andre from Andre and Andrea's Love Crossing Borders. I appreciate you guys. We'll be seeing you again this Wednesday. I'll talk to you later. <laughs>